Hey! Hey! Welcome back 
Jack, to your what's up? Boy. It's your favorite boys, and you know everyone else. Uh, this is <laughs> episode what five? Four. 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 Episode four. How do we lose track already? Three, two, um, one. Count. Episode four uh, of Shadows Over Velda. Um, and as always, first of all, I want to thank you guys for uh, taking time out of your busy day to. Um, play a little bit of pretend with us and, and play D D dungeons and dragons oh, there's no, there's no. uh i want to thank the audience for being here too thank you guys so much for time out of your day to sit down and uh come with us into a dream world of magic and uh have a great time uh just make a story together and uh you know maybe cry laugh and have a, and just just have fun for the next couple of hours so thank you so much um we are going to start uh we didn't do this last week because we uh I had a lot going on. I was a little stressed, so I, I kind of forgot about it. But um, t today we are going to start asking or continue asking questions of our player characters um, just to kind of give a little bit of their personality without revealing too much about their character because we want that to come in, in, in the game. Yeah. Um, and they're usually a little surface level, you know, material plane things. Uh, and this one is growing up in the 90s, as a lot of you guys, I imagine, have or at least, uh, you know, early 2000s. What do you think your favorite, or uh, their, your character's favorite cartoon would be? Like Saturday morning cartoon. Oh, that's a good one. Saturday morning oh. cartoon. Hmm. I love this one. Wait, does it have to be in the morning? No, no, not at all. Just a, just a cartoon that you really, that your character would really enjoy, you know? Okay. Saturday morning is just a kind I of I immediately addendum. have one. <laughs> Oh, let's hear okay, it. Okay, we can, we can, yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go in order of whoever thinks of it. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> uh, Codename Kids Next Door. What the I, yes. I just That's literally what popped about. into my head. Let's fucking go! Technology. That's okay. crazy! Y'all are on the you. same wavelength. Oh, I've, I've yeah. got mine. All right, uh, Wall. What's Wall's favorite? Saturday Wall morning. would absolutely love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Hey, oh, okay. Yeah, Wait, yeah they're one? just big guys. Yeah. Oh, and they're so fighting good. together and it's glory and they eat pizza. It's great. What version? Oh, no, the classic one. Okay, all right. Teenage Mutant yeah. Ninja Turtles. No he would version. absolutely hum the theme matter. song all the time. <laughs> what would that sound like? <laughs> I'm not going to demonstrate. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. You, you have to earn that game. one. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Um, who's next? I do have a. Uh, I do have a different answer. Even though Spy Kids Next Door was what popped in, Spy I think Ray's Kids Next Door. So, sorry. Okay, like, listen. Okay, I'm just abbreviating. <laughs> <next door. laughs> Robert Rodriguez is a little known cartoon. <laughs> I was gonna say, man, now you've made me forget what I was gonna say. No! I thought I'm embarrassed. I'm blushing. No, no, no. Okay, my character's uh, favorite cartoon probably be uh, Invader Zim. Okay. I can oh, see that. I like off that. the wall. Off That's off like the that. wall? Invader Zim? Well, I, I mean, like, like it. it's a little, like, if your mom walked in when you were a kid and saw you watching Invader Zim and it was at one of those scenes, I'm pretty sure your mom would be like, like, give it a scowl. No, nah, right? my mom was cool. My mom would. <laughs> my mom would be was like, that's cool. a little weird. My mom did. <laughs> that's crazy. I wasn't allowed to watch it, so yeah. There you go. Well, uh, what really? about Argentum, Hayden? What no. Saturday morning cartoon would uh, Argentum oh. watch? What? Oh, I said it was Codename Kids Next yeah, Door. Oh, right. Sorry. Oh, my God. I'm, 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 I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Uh, Sunder, Juzo, what about you? <laughs> well, Sunder's an extension of myself, so I'd probably say Courage the Cowardly Dog. Okay. Oh, hell Return yeah. the slab. Kind of deep. Yeah, exactly. What's your offer? <laughs> I like to think Argentum and Sunder would like super watch that show together because oh, that oh, sounds oh, like a. That's, I'm Lord like, that's also an Argentum show. I think. Sitting down with a bowl of popcorn, chewing through seasons. So true. Every I episode is iconic that. of that show. Just like SpongeBob. God, no, I, I, I just want to watch that show now. I think mm -hmm. I'm gonna binge that later. God damn. After D and D. Fun. You can watch your cartoons D &D. after D and D. Hell Divers is funny. <laughs> yeah, you can watch your cartoons after D and D and Hell Divers. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. For Phoenix, I'm gonna yeah. say, uh, oh, this is tough. I, I was gonna say, uh, if if it's an older one, it'd probably be like GI Joe, Real American Hero, and then if it's a newer one, probably like Martin Mystery. Oh, Martin, Martin Mystery. Oh my God. Yo, what a pick. I loved me some Martin Mystery. A... Damn. Oh, I love like that a... show. 
that rem it's in the same vein of like like slightly obscure uh animated shows as like megas xlr yeah and uh yeah that's great great choice good choices guys good choices guys what a lineup mm -hmm. i'd spend saturday morning with this crew um so uh let's pivot <sighs> over to the actual table and where we're at uh there's a lot going on obviously um does anybody want to give their best you don't have to explain the entire thing but give their best uh summary of last session and uh your rough approximation of what happened oh god we're the worst <laughs> <laughs> i do think somebody was princess listen, carried through a bunch of waves right i yeah. gave you guys the note <laughs> i remember that so oh <laughs> sure. you literally have a cheat notes. sheet in front of you. This isn't a quiz, by the way. You can I'm summarized. We whatever feels like a quiz. Hole. We I remember. Got a hole. We went to funeral. We saw a big guy with red hair. That that's all I know. Okay. All right. All that's right. The summary. That's a very very good summary. I um. Open so those notes. there were definitely some expand. cool things that happened in that though. You know, like I got stabbed. Yeah. Bro, yeah. You Zep, did. Zep got stabbed <laughs> several times. Twice. I'm poisoned right now. Mm -hmm. is, is 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 currently poisoned. <laughs> um. That's crazy. Actually. We, we got introduced to uh, the entity that had been like following you guys for some time. Um, had at the fu not funeral, but at the the ritual of uh, parting of the soul, um, hmm. the, the drow, the ancient drow ritual of parting of the soul, and then uh, you know, Wolf in her presence will come and grab it and take it back down to the yeah. demon web pits and into the nine hells and spread it into Ethereal. Um, that process went fairly well actually it was it was pretty fluid um you guys learned a lot uh during the process uh and as the presence of lolf began to effuse itself into the space uh this crazy gale of shadows began to envelop the top of the far tower <clears throat> almost void-like, this black particulate assumed a humanoid form uh, in the center of the ritual space atop the far tower in the east end of Ivbranca. And after that, the leader of the ritual, um, who we affectionately dubbed Mihawk Man, um, the leader of the ritual uh, peeled back his hood and began to reveal his true form. He was his his humanoid form was was false and he began to grow in size uh sloughing off vapors and shadows as he stepped over the plinth and uh ascended to nine feet tall this almost demonic looking but uh handsome uh demigod stood before you and revealed himself to be Veyron, the son of Lolf. He bore a wicked smile, and that's where we ended the session. So, um, uh, evil rock star man. Fuck. Yeah, evil rock star man. Uh, looks like David, he looks like David Bowie. Everybody in D&D &D looks like David Bowie. Um, <laughs> Do you guys have any questions before we, we, we start the session proper? How big is his dick? How big is his dick? I don't know. Maybe you can find out, though. You might be able to find out. Hey, yo. <laughs> Who knows? Hey, I know this is I touching to between you and your mom, demigod. but uh, can we see I love a guy penis? with mommy issues. Um, <laughs> I know you're having this conversation, but that's another point. your dick. Just... He, he began speaking to this shadowy entity that is in the center of the ritual space with confidence and and swagger and uh he spoke and continues speaking mother your reign over the dark elves and the chaos you cherish so dearly is waning the time has come for a new order under my rule, your weakened state has left our race fractured. A mother that has forgotten her own children. And he gets closer to this almost like black sand 
entity that's like whipping itself up and uh, assuming this uh, torso, this very loose, almost feminine form. Um, Holy it is shit. meeting him eye to eye with coal red eyes piercing through him. You see them narrow and you hear all around you, not just from this entity, but almost as though you were surrounded by a thousand versions of them, a low, amused chuckle. And it echoes ominously across the uh, black stone slabs that dot this short landscape. And she speaks, my son, you dare summon me with lies only to reveal your pitiful ambition. You think you can usurp me with a mere thousand riders? Yes, I know of your burgeoning army, thrumming below the footfalls of Ifbronken citizens, a thousand riders. <laughs> If you can't inspire loyalty, quantity over quality. And you see the representatives of Ibranca, who are also here with you, blanch, except for one person. Ken Magane, who Argentum had been keen on uh, in the previous session, gotten a lot of like information um, through assessing his 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 the demeanor and how he's holding himself, still sweating. He is terrified in the presence of all of these powerful entities, but the rest of the uh, representatives, May, The Heart, uh, uh, Sheriff Rochelle, they are just aghast at hearing this information. Some of it looks like some of them don't even believe it, and they begin to kind of talk amongst each other, whispering to each other, uh, trying to make sense of this whole situation. Um, meanwhile, this conversation continues. Would anybody like to do anything? It, are we still mind-linked, Argentum? We sure are. It lasts for an hour, buddy. <laughs> um, then no, I would, I would, uh, can I start to, can I, can I make myself small and stealth? <laughs> you want to try and stealth. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can try. Make a stealth check. I think subconsciously just start to shrink away from uh, the middle here. Yeah, you Does can try. Does that make try. sense? Yeah, you can try. Make a stealth check. Of course, of course you can try. Stealth against the Do gods, it, why don't you? Um. There you go. Oh, God, 19. 19. Thank you. Wow. wow. So. <laughs> Mere mortals can't see me. As, as the essence of Lolf and Veyron is ha are having this conversation, you feel one of the many thousand iterations of Lolf surrounding you pierce eyes into you. The entity itself doesn't seem to notice you. They are pretty much amused. They, they, they seem to be in a very positive, almost jovial state as they are looking at their son in front of them. Uh, but you do feel like something sees you. I'm gonna be sick. Uh, can I can I kind of um, meander behind here? Yeah, Is it yeah. possible? You are to able to. You are able to do that. Um, the 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 two having the conversation in the middle aren't noticing you. Don't seem to care about you. I mean, for all intents and purposes, you guys are ants. It doesn't. It, it, they don't seem to care. But there's something around here that did see you. Um, for sure. But you're you're free to move. Um, the. Uh, the conversation continues, and Lulf begins to spill forth shadowy, sandy particles at Veyron. You are desperate. Veyron, undeterred, his voice is laced with a weird venom and resolve, and he says back, it's not just the Driders, Mother. I've discovered something. He paces around the visage of his mother. A secret you've kept well hidden. Your only vulnerability. Oh. Something you never wanted the Pantheon to know. <laughs> Her amusement fades immediately and is replaced by some flicker of concern. The 
howling winds around you begin to shift direction violently and uh, almost knocking you off your feet, and it continues in another direction, almost counterclockwise. And Lulth says, What folly leads you to believe you can exploit me, even if you were telling the truth? Would anybody like to do anything before the uh, next awesome. section of the conversation happens? I just want to uh, whisper to... Sorry, if you guys wanted to go first. I just wanted to whisper to Wall. And say... Hey, buddy. I think we need to get the fuck out of here now. Yes. I am in agreement. I think... Things are not progressing the way they are supposed to. I do it, but I can't. So can you maybe look for a way out? Uh, can I... Is there a way out of this? Uh, do you uh, to make a make Make a, make a perception check, yeah. Let's see here. Oh, whoop. Woo! 16! Okay. Not bad. Nice. Um, nice. While you look around you, um, you assess your surroundings uh, pretty uh, elegantly and, 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 and quietly as you... Um, that's a key mind of the two demi, uh, god and the demigod in front of you. Uh, the only way you can see down from where you are is off the side of the tower. Oh. There's mm. no ladder. It doesn't look like there's any sort of rope or anything like that that's just in place. Um, and the other smaller tower that's kind of attached via like two black stone spokes to this main tower though you see that you see that you see uh, at, the, at the bottom part of this map uh, also just has a sheer drop and doesn't even look like it's connected to the rest of the tower besides that just like you know outcropping of stone so you don't see any way out of this uh at least right now like you don't see any physical way to 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 go downstairs or anything like that hmm. the only way i see that we could leave is eh, by taking a dive off the tower how far is the dive? How far is the dive, DM? <laughs> it is 300 feet. <laughs> <laughs> I do not think we will survive if we jump off this this place. How much rope okay, you got? On. I mean, between you guys? Probably a lot. <laughs> we all have a lot of rope. Oh, my food's here. Hold on a sec. Let me go grab it. Go! That's so true. <laughs> Fly, you we're, we're fucked. That's what I'm we're... Doing. <laughs> we might fun? be just a teensy weensy <sighs> bit fucked. Just a little bit. Oh hell yeah! I'll um. All right, we're back. We're back. We're back. <clears throat> yeah, we're back. I'll That's also whisper. I'll start whispering loud enough so that everyone sitting over on this side can hear. Um. It's Tyrael, right? That's the nephew's name? Yes. Yeah, he's across the way. Also... He's right here. We should probably get Tyrael out of here. Otherwise, this uh, place isn't going to have a ruler. Possibly. Uh, I'm sure Anybody got rope? Someone. No rope, but... Rope? I can try to get him out of here. Uh, rope. As you guys begin to start to form a plan... Veyron begins to speak more as he paces around the visage of his mother. It's not just about power, mother. It's about the hearts of our followers. I've seen discontent, cracks in your empire, branching paths of belief, splintering you, us. It must be rectified, reset. If Bronca as my base of operations, I will offer them a new creed. One free from your madness, your weakness. And from the Evbronkan countryside, we will repurpose them into an army of the undead. Thanks to my associate. And his eyes turn to the only one who doesn't seem scared for their lives. Ken Magane steps forward. Also, that's our culprit. <laughs> yeah, I, I sense it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> he steps forward out behind the visage of Lolf and prostrates himself, lays, er, uh, goes to his knees <clears throat> and puts his hands on his thighs. 
and then Loth leans forward into her son's ear as this sickening smoke creeps around his skull, and she says, You overstep, child. And she reaches over to Ken Magane and points her finger at him. Let me roll thing. Oh, oh. Oh is dear she, God! Oh. She's just gonna fucking. <laughs> she's just, uh, so I get to Doctor Manhattan, this dude. Oh Uh-oh. dear Lord! Oh no! Uh, okay. Uh. So she points to him, and you see this smoke come out in a bolt and hit Ken Magane in the chest as he is prostrated before them. He begins to tear up before he looks at the visage of Lolf, and he himself smiles and stands back up. Nothing happened. And Veyron hmm. says, You are trapped here, weakened, imprisoned. How does it feel, Mother, to not be at your full power? To be webbed to the side? You have not been yourself lately. And he reaches into his lapel and pulls out, let me see the description of this, pulls out this black stone sphere, this obsidian sphere that looks like on the inside is writhing with storms and webs. And then a pupil appears. I have one. And there is another one here. The eight trappings of Loth We'll never come back together. Not while I hold the last one. Anybody like to do anything before the next portion of the conversation starts? Um, <laughs> I have a really- We gotta get out of here. Sorry. I have a fucking stupid idea that could get me so killed. Okay. And I'm deciding if I say fuck it, we wall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am always of the opinion that Fuck it, we wall is the best course of action. I'm gonna um, ask. You guys kind got of like silly, 30 seconds. I'm gonna ask kind of a silly question. So, in seeing my friend, I, I say my friends, but you know, my companions, uh, in seeing my companions fight and how they've moved, have I noticed that anyone is particularly stealthy at all? Uh, make a uh, make a perception check. Yeah. I mean, he was right next to you, but he did stealth and he got a 19. So make a perception check. <laughs> I was like, yeah, my mom. Is anyone? Oh! oh yo! 21! Oh, 21? No, no, no. I have Nine? eyes, y'all! 9 plus 10, <laughs> that's 21, man. Eyes you, and you... functional memory. <laughs> uh, you totally notice uh, Zeph kind of peel away and, and uh, abscond themselves to the rear left. Uh, well, I guess, like, what is like, west the rear west portion of the uh the ruined tower um cowering okay in zeph's mind he's going to hear because we are still linked i need you to do me a favor darling can you come here i'm going to turn you invisible i need you to take that eyeball thing all right Holy shit, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Are you trying to get me fucking killed? These are gods. No, it's just an idea. Or we can just go get Terry or one or the other. (sighs) One of these plans sounds good at the other. Somebody work on a way to get us off this tower. (laughs) I I said it was fucking wild, man. Uh, (laughs) Um... I can try to go for Tyrael if you make me invisible, yes. All right. For the for the eye, there's there's no way <laughs> you get that Let's immediately. In your head. <laughs> okay, would you like to execute this plan? Yes. Because we're gonna please. continue. Okay, all right. Um, I'm going to spend because we short rested. I have my inscription back, so I'm going to spend my inscription to cast. Uh, be still and silent, <laughs> and turn. Turn Zeph invisible. Okay. And 
he can do with what he Zef, will. What do you, Zef? What do you? Okay, no, we're gonna the the remainder of the conversation. Another part of the conversation is going to occur, um, and I'll give you guys an opportunity to do more. This is not necessarily battle, but it's just kind of like okay. a, you know, a sure. narrative tete a tete. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Loth leans forward again, and you see on what you can, what you can make out from this face, if it even is that, this writhing, swirling mass of black sand and smoke, you hear, your insolence has revealed truths I must consider. Tread this bridge carefully, Veyron, for even a mother's patience has its limits. Veyron says, No! And he turns and offers the eye to one of the two cultists that are standing on either side of the plinth. The, the cultist walks forward, bows his head, and reaches for the eye. The eye is placed in his hand, and it you see his hands go down uh, further than you think it would. It looks like it's very heavy, um, and he retreats back to the plinth and backs up. And he says, No! He draws his sword, and it's this black steel sword with teeth in it. It looks like if it, it, it got a piece of you, it would get the whole thing. I am not a child. I have grown powerful. My followers are legion. He's throwing a tantrum. Both Lorian will be mine, and I will see your influence wane before me. Would anybody else like to do anything while this conversation continues? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, so, here's a question. Uh, Argentum cast a. Sp is this a spell? It is. Invisibility is a spell. It is a spell. Yes. And no one did anything like you know, maybe like oh, oh po point at this person casting spells. You know. Once. They're just. I mean, so the writing. the uh, we'll call them the legates. The legates of the of Ibranca have noticed you guys doing things. It's not like you've, you know been completely invisible to everybody around you. Uh, the cultists are enthralled by this conversation. Obviously, this is their, this is their, you know, their god and demigod, you know, a family reunion. This is something that you never see in your life, right? So they're enthralled by this conversation. Veyrown looks to be incredibly distracted by the uh, ability to have seen his mother. They are entranced in conversation right now. So uh, everybody around these two, like, sees you besides the cultists. Um, you're invisible. A seat not sees you, but you know, you're invisible. Um, but they have noticed you guys doing things. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. looking like a little heated, I'm gonna take this the moment to use one of my spell slots and cast a false life on myself. <laughs> okay, you do so. Nice. Um, you are coated in this thin film that gives you uh, a semblance of additional hit points. Yeah, nice little five um, temp. Wall is gonna actually like maneuver slightly so right. that if for uh, for whatever reason uh, Veron uh, decides to swing at Lolf with this sword, he okay. will be in a position to intercept the blade. Okay, okay, cool. Mm. Uh, right. I was gonna ask, you said he put the eye down? He gave the eye to the cultist right here, this one. And the, the eye looks very heavy? The, the eye looks very heavy, yeah. It looks like he was straining to hold on to it. Um, he has since, when he re retreated back to the plinth, um, put it on top of the plinth uh, to his left. Um, but he is entranced oh. by the conversation. Uh, it is very tense, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> it's a wee bit tense. I guess I really wouldn't see that. Um, I mean, you're invisible still. Yeah, I'm invisible and you, blind. Do you and know blind, where but... people are or were? So I have. Uh, I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the um. Ah, uh, I do have a charge of divine sense that can help. Maybe. That's true. Sure. If you would like to use that. Yeah, and I, I think I want to try and start uh, since I'm invisible, just moving. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> I wanted to, because oh, you said, you said, you said, you said, even though you right are here. invisible, 
I need you to roll another stealth check. Okay, you said Tyriel is the the one in the blue, right? The one in the blue, correct. Okay. Not I mean, accurate I... to like images, but you know what I mean. It's that's the position. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, oh. I'm 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 trying to. I'm gonna use the ruler here. <laughs> I'm trying to go this okay. way. Can you, see, you see the? Yeah, I see. I see. I see the plan there. <laughs> Maybe I should have gone this way. But... <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not very wise. Okay. I mean, hey, it's I'm so fine. Sorry for the idea I put in your head, but let's fucking go. <laughs> Listen, okay, listen, listen, uh, roll, please listen. roll a stealth check with course, advantage course. because you're invisible. Okay. I was gonna say, okay. uh, better set up drafting a new character, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I already have one drafted. We're chilling. I've accepted uh, this whole week. Oh, I have to get up. Fuck. Let me get up Veyron's sheet here. Oh. <laughs> oh, Damn it! God. I should have took what proficiency in stealth. What is wrong with me? If I get killed, I will pay you like twenty dollars, bro. Twenty dollars? <laughs> That's how much money is worth? Let's Dude, I rolled an A. Oh, an advantage, 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 advantage. I rolled a nine. <laughs> Dude, oh, bro, no. Do, you, do we have inspiration oh, that we can use? Shit. I, 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 I don't, we all had I one, gave, right? I think I gave one. Yeah. I, do you all have one? We all had one for listening to the thing. Oh, yeah, we do. We do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 sure. Would you let me use one more shot? Uh, okay. You burn your inspo right Fingers. Here. Fingies crossed. Fingers. You have to roll high here, right? Two low rolls. This is variant. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, just eight, for my nine, reference. Ten. Incredible. Insane. Are you just, kidding me? You learned to counter. What is this? Walked away. Are you going to the front of the plinth, or are you going behind the cultists? If you go behind the cultists, it may take longer, I think. But if you go in front of it, it's a little riskier. Um, if I yeah, if I sense that that uh, that Veyron is right here, then I'll, I'll go I'll go this way. Okay, this cool. Way. Behind the cultist. You get behind the cultist. You manage, and the, the 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 crazy part about this is Veyron doesn't see you. The cultist is completely unaware as you pass. You see him almost tearing up behind his like his mask. <laughs> he is he is entranced by this this is the most one of the most beautiful things he's ever seen in his entire life but the thing that does look at you is the orb the pupil shifts and you feel it oh, burn geez. into your skull make a constitution saving throw good god oh, I mean, you're hurts. good at these right my brain you're great uh, wait am i no so I, i've, I've, I've so never beautiful. seen you i'm poisoned I've don't i have this advantage you. oh shit. oh yeah you did have this advantage did it wear off Ooh. No, it didn't wear off. You have to use a like a lesser rest or take a, take a long rest. All right. I mean, I've never I've never seen you lose one of these, so you know. <laughs> I believe in you. We haven't we haven't witnessed it. I have to get the fucking items sheet up too. Hold on. Oh, I don't I don't think poison either, gives you but... disadvantage on saving throws. I just looked. Oh, it does it not? Doesn't. It's ability. No, just attack, attack rolls and abilities. Right, sure. So All right. Oh, All right. Okay. Okay. Constitution. Constitution. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> what are your roles this playing? Game oh, this game wants me dead. This game wants me dead. This game. Oh my god. Well, first your invisibility awful. fades. <laughs> what? You are the your I invisibility I suddenly feel fades. so seen. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you are that, right? seen. The orb its pupil is transfixed on you. It doesn't look like Veyron cares, but the orb begins to start to vibrate and shake. The cultist doesn't notice you. What do you do? He doesn't notice you. What the fuck? You were behind him. This is the moment where you kill the cultist. <laughs> Dude, uh, can I even do that? No. Uh, it's up to you, man. What do you want to do? <laughs> uh, oh, oh, sevens fuck. in the chat, please. Dude, dude, what do I do? The conversation continues. Wait, wait, okay, yeah, yeah, we are, we are mind linked. Uh, as soon as I feel myself be invisible, can I just say to Argentum, "Fuck, what do I do?" Fucking no, go to Teriel. Okay. Uh, the conversation continues. I'll just start to uh, to to meander. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me grab the. This is. I wrote a lot for this. Hold on. Oh, where to go? Where to go? Where to go? I'm sorry. Oh, dude, if I had any spells or anything, this would be so much easier. Okay. Lolf. <laughs> so strange. Like, Lolf begins to 
crane their neck around Veyrunes and whispers loudly <laughs> into his ear. So be it, my son. But in the end, the spider ensnares the fly. Weave your webs of war. And as she's continuing to say this, her form becomes more and more corporeal. It's almost as though she is bringing in every ounce of power that she has remaining in this holy space to oh, become God. physical. Oh, no. Weave your webs of war. I will show you the true meaning of domination. Their eyes locked. A silent battle of wills. The balance of power on LaFlorian teetering on the edge of Veyron's knife. Last time, what do you guys want to do? Hmm. Can I, I see hand, a, across the, the way if anyone else, like, are, are they like prepping to do some shit or are they all just standing no, okay, like, so the legged, arms to the side? The rest of the legged are terrified. Um, uh, that's, that seems to be about it. Tyrael is looking at you guys like, he's sweating, uh, he's gritting his teeth. Um, at times he has been shaking his head and nodding his head, but it's, in, it, it, it's unclear what action he is agreeing with or not agreeing with. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's, this it's guy. nutty. My... Uh, yes. Yeah, let's let, uh, let's let, uh, Zeph try to live here first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what I, what would I know about this eye of of Lolt? That's what it is, right? Yes, it is. It is. It is an is eye. It just, is of it destroyable? Lolt. Is it like how would I know anything about it? Do I know how heavy it is before I try anything? Like, is make it, a religion I... check. Okay. Make a religion check. Yeah. Thank you so much. My follow-up question is: How much can I move in this moment? I mean, as much as your speed allows. Like okay. Thirty. This is technically another turn. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. That's Six all I Six seconds have passed. Uh, yes. You said religion? Religion? Yes. I mean, you're I... good at that, right? You're like a religious... Yeah, dude, yeah, you're yeah, pretty yeah. good at that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm think? proficient in it. <laughs> okay. 15. It's not oh, better is... than my other ones. Hold on a second. No worries, no rush. I mean, you okay. know what? It's higher than 10. <laughs> Eight, uh, nine, ten. That's awful. That's <laughs> fucking hilarious. I'm taking a picture of that. It's like Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. What did I miss? It just my stealth yeah. checks earlier. Oh, right. Beautiful. Like um, Zef count so you know, cloud. you know what this is vaguely. You have heard stories of. Uh, well, there are many, many stories of how Lolf was defeated. In, in the grand battle between the dragons and, and, and uh, the drow um, and the, the undead army of Lolf eons ago. Uh, some people say that she just kind of faded to obscurity. Uh, some people say she locked herself away in the demon web pits, her own domain. Um, but other parts and other sects of the religion say that she was Horcrux. She was spread to the uh, different planes of existence so that she could never come back together um, in different forms. And based on some of the stories, one of those incarnations was her eyeball. One of her actual literal eyes, physically her eyeball, imbued with the ability to see through deception, invisibility, darkness, pretty much anything. Oh my God, yeah. Um, True sight. And the eye itself is enc encased in this crystal orb. Um, and it, it was, it was, from what you have learned, uh, it was hidden away in the plane of Earth. You don't know how it's gotten here. You don't. You you, you assume that uh, Veyrune somehow went on an extra planar adventure to maybe gather some of these or just one. You you don't really know, um, but you know that's probably what this is. Trug, it feels it's like dragon it. balls. <laughs> yeah, like a dragon ball. <laughs> but it's like encased in an orb, right? It's like, like it's not like sopping wet or anything. It's like. No, 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 no. The eyeball is floating in this like t torrent of, of webs um, okay. and, and smoke and flames and stuff inside of this uh, eyeball. Kind of like a, a, a Palantir looks, if you're familiar okay. with Lord of the Rings. That was immediately what I thought about. <laughs> All right. I think I'm just going to 
I've thought it over. <laughs> okay. I think I'll uh, use my action to dash, and um, if I may, so that I can make it this way, and then to uh, Tyrion. You may. I, don't, I can't, like, go diagonal, so. You may, but you got to do one more stealth check. I'm so sorry, man. I know I keep throwing these at no, you. No, 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 it's okay. It, it's all right. <laughs> and this is it. Oh. Let's go, buddy. So you don't wrap you up. Just be clear, you don't touch, you don't touch the, the, uh, you don't touch the eye, right? No, no, I, uh, okay. I don't think I have the balls for it right now. Maybe if the chance arises again. Okay. Four, dude, what the oh, fuck? No. And it's red. It's red. That's, red. that's, that's, a, nat one. One. that's a nat it's one, red. dude. Oh. That's a nat oh. one. Okay. Oh, um, no. You get as far as here. And I should have touched it the entire time. The eye of the orb was locked on you. But now out of your periphery, you see the tiny pinpricks of coal that are burning furiously inside of this black smoke visage pivot to you. <laughs> I suddenly feel death. And you feel a wave of air and fire brush your back as you are pulled forward to right here. So you, have to move, you have to move your own thing because I can't move you for some reason. Right there. No, I, I'm there. I'm there. You moved me. Oh, am I? Okay, hold on. Let me refresh my page. Sorry. Wait, I don't I don't see you. Where are you? You're, you're, to me, you're right, a, right on that cultist's butt. Yeah, you're, you're right riding that cultist. Yeah, it looks like you're on the cultist's butt to me. I don't know if you can move forward or not. Everybody really might matter. have here. Is that work? There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's perfect. Okay. Exactly where you need to be. Oh, my. you're oh. there? That's not Veyron. good. Oh, no. After I'm his danger. mother looks at you, his gaze slowly turns to you and he smiles. Uh, Are you done skulking around? He grabs you by your neck. Um, <laughs> let me roll an attack here. Uh, does a 23 hit? <laughs> Damn. It's okay, it's a grab, guys. Oh, <laughs> okay. don't, worry, sure. don't worry, no damage, right? You are grappled. Can, as he um, raises you up. Yes, yes, yes. Hand the wall as a reaction. Oh, uh, yeah. Draw, he was waiting. Draw the sword that he, he's been carrying that he found in that hallway with the dancing lady. Yeah. And take a swing Warm at Varun's arm, the one that's holding on to Zephyrael. The one that's holding on to Zephyrael. Okay. Yes, you can. Make an attack roll. Porn sword, porn sword. Porn yeah, sword, using sword. the porn sword. Porn sword, porn sword, porn sword. I actually sword. don't know what to roll for the porn sword. I don't think I have this. You just roll a straight attack. You are you're, you're a fighter. You're proficient in long swords. It's just a it's just a plus one long sword, um, for uh, attack and roll purposes. So you get a plus one to whatever you roll. Okay, so it'll be a one d twenty plus seven. See me thirteen. Right. You go at him, like incredibly uh, efficiently and practiced you fling down this sword but as you draw it a gleaming light comes from it and repels all of the black smoke around it as you bang actually make contact with Veyrune Ooh. and the wound begins to burn him it's this white energy seals it back up and he looks at you and hisses Gosh sword of a sister and the smoke repels away from everywhere uh around you um Lolth herself looks at you uh Zephyrael is dropped <laughs> you fall to the ground as you walls, the turns to you uh, wall's gonna wall like when he when uh when uh Verun hissed at him wall roared back like Rah! you will not touch them they are my charge. Okay. So um, I pay you the big bucks. <laughs> instead, Veyron looks at Zeph on the ground and reaches for uh, their waist and grabs this coiled thing that's been around Zeph's waist since you guys have, have seen them. And like, like, like somebody unfurling a yo-yo. <laughs> Zeph tumbles around on the ground and raises this up in front of Loth and says, 
I now have two. And uh, reaches back and gives this whip to another cultist that has been behind him, the one that is next to the other side of the plinth. Can I, um, can I do anything to stop him from yeah, doing you're this? Yeah, you can do whatever you want, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, I would have definitely re well resisted or, 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 I mean. Uh, I mean, okay, uh, it's, it's, you can try, yes, um, you may I try. Understand, uh, I understand, I make, make a strength check, um, Zeph, to try and resist this, this grip. Oh, I'm sure that'll go well. I got a 19. It was, okay, let me roll a strength. <laughs> There's a chance this works, guys. Math. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> uh, as much as he tries to uncoil this, it seems knotted and wound around you, and instead he lifts you up, and his hand begins to burn. And he drops you. These mortals are cursed. And handling me. <laughs> Yep, wall's gonna swing again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna back away. <laughs> if I can. Start okay. Scurry back. Swing, swing again at Veyron? Yeah, at the same hand that he that he used to uh, to try to grab uh, okay. the, the whip. Make another attack. <laughs> 25. Okay. Damn. Wow. You come back down with the sword of the Silver Sister, and you hit in the same spot on his arm keeping, uh, making sure that he does not touch Zeph anymore. And you make, you make solid contact. You find extreme purchase on his forearm and you carve out a piece of his celestial flesh as it falls to the ground and wriggles and uh, turns into nothing but black smoke as it is absorbed into Lolf. Uh, roll the damage. Oh Holy my God. Shit. Damn. Lord of the sister. Why do I roll for the damage long, on that one? Long sword. Uh, that is, it's, it's, 2d6 plus oh. your strength uh, we are, plus we are walling out right now plus your strength plus one it's a plus one yeah because it's a plus one long sword long sword correct 1d10 I thought not this long sword oh it's a different long sword this is a different material as well 10 damage Ooh. okay yeah <sighs> and he sheathes his sword and holds his forearm and uh, he he Takes the arm that he you had you had carved some flesh out of. He beckons towards Ken, and Ken shoots over next to you, Zeph. He grabs Ken, who looks absolutely petrified. Um, he's not doing anything. It looks like he's just accepting his fate. Um, <laughs> Lolf begins to uh, slowly fade away. Once more, my child. I will show you the meaning of domination. Your rebellion will be a footnote in my reign. I will come together once more. And all of the shadows in the room suck into Lolf and explode in the center in what looks to be some sort of powdery spider web uh, formation. Everybody in the room uh, make a dexterity saving throw. Sure. Yes, dude. Oh, I'm bad at Okay, those. I like... Th I don't like that. Cool. Oh. Deck save, huh? Deck save. Great. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> no way, dude. Oh, We're all doing great. really well. Bro. Bro. Oh, oh, dude. Dude. Oh, oh, dude. Oh, oh, where's our tantrum crit? That makes so much sense. <laughs> All right, let me roll this damage. I'm gonna roll it on the table for you guys, just because. Roll yeah, 20 oh, is cursed. Yeah, this platform sucks, guys. It does, you're right. I mean, I could've told it, you that. It's very compelling. I stole your luck, I'm uh, so sorry. You really do write the story, don't you? Oh. I do. It's the only time I've rolled today, and I got fucking that one. What the fuck? All right. You, you all head. take if you okay. Uh, anybody who got less than fifteen, uh, which is everybody except Argentum, uh, you guys take sixteen points of uh, like I force <laughs> damage. Uh, this is bad. And then any, everybody who succeeded on the save takes half of that, so eight points of force damage as you are thrown back five feet. I'm really glad I temp 
teleported there. Yeah, that's actually really smart. Five Give feet. Me okay. I land in um yeah, you land on lap, and I am unconscious. Okay. Oh shit. All right. Wait, I was um, like here, right? So did, did I fall into into Veyrun's <laughs> soft grip? Well, I mean, it depends on which way you were facing. If you were facing Veyrun, you flew you flew black backwards. Yeah. Oh, oh wait, shit. No, you're right. You're right. Lolf, it, it Lolf exploded. So maybe you went oh. uh this way. Okay. Yeah. I'm so over here. Yeah. Okay. So you all get flown back five feet. Um, you are not knocked prone, but you did take the force damage and you're knocked back five feet. Uh, Veyrun, then, as his mother has disappeared, he grimaces and snarls at all of you. You mortals. He grabs Ken, backs up with his cultists, and uh, stands upon the plinth and says, or uh, he, he unsheathes his sword and points it at uh, the wall and says, you are first, and then points it to uh, Zeph and says, you are second, and then swipes his sword and a portal opens in front of him. And he jumps with Ken through the portal, staring daggers at every single party member that he can see. Uh, they are effectively gone. The cultists follow as well. And Lolf is no more. Uh, at least the visage of Lolf is no more. <laughs> Wall's just oh like God. getting up from from getting blasted. He's like, oh, "Come back! I am not you done guys? killing you yet." It is it is frighteningly silent, except for the howl of the wind, the the, the natural wind that is occurring around you. Um, you okay. feel a breeze retake the top of the tower. Um, it's Ken has gone too. Hold on, a breeze okay. retakes the top of the tower. Um, it is about. <laughs> It's about 7 p.m. The sun is starting to set. Uh, did he take the eye? He didn't say he did. I... <laughs> the cultist had the eye, Even, right? Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to do this. Whenever eye, I forget, right? the cultist did have the eye, but you did bring up a good point. Okay. Even, even or odd. I will roll based on that. <laughs> so and since you had the... Leaves it? Since, I mean, <laughs> they're fallible. He is a demigod. Of course, even of course. Of Oh, for me, uh, odd. Oh, I've been rolling odd numbers all night. He took it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. He oh, took the eye man. with him. Um, but you see, sense. the rem the remaining legate members are shaking. They are stunned. Okay. Only one who seems to be a little bit more composed, but still blanched and terrified, like white as a sheet, is uh, the heart. Um, they seem to have experienced something like this before. It seems, uh, but everybody else is in shambles uh one of their members has just been outed as some sort of uh spy or or mm. or or secret agent or or uh reluctant uh uh partner in all of this so uh what do you guys do should i roll a death save uh i mean yeah i guess you should roll a death save if you're unconscious i bleed out Imperial's lap <laughs> that's what i do <laughs> All right, can someone tell me what the hell's going on here? First of all, does anyone have any healing? <laughs> Tyrael stands up and says, I do. And he puts his hands on Zephyrial and casts Lay on Hands. Oh, cool. uh, what and you receive, eh, I'll give you 10 is. points. You get 10 points of uh, HP back. Brought back oh, my ribs are crushed. <laughs> it's okay. And Tyrael, like gets on his knees and starts to help you up. Um, and pats your back. You're going to be all right. That was crazy. <laughs> crazy is uh, definitely a way to put it. Is this wasn't planned, was it? Amongst you four, five? They all shake their heads and hold their hands up. Um, no, uh, it doesn't seem like any of these people are saying they were involved in this. Uh, the, uh, the heart uh, looks at the wall and kind of smiles, uh, gives a nod, and um, gives, a, gives a salute, uh, some sort of almost archaic salute that looks like a combination of several different armies. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, the wall you, knows what, what they're doing, yeah. 
a hundred percent. Um, so what do you, what, what do you guys do? These, uh, the, the legate are assembling themselves and beginning to talk amongst themselves about what the fuck just happened and what they are going to do. Um, Argentum would like to walk forward, uh, journal open. Um, sure. like they're already writing, but they're like not even looking at the page. They're just looking at the four. That's okay. awesome. When things have calmed down, I would like to speak to all of you about what you know about that Ken fellow. We need everything we can get on him. We can. Anything you might know, anything that could lead us to why he might have done this. Yes, of course. Any time I have free, this is yours. And, uh, you know, they all respond in kind. Um, very, very shaken. Uh, some even damaged by the winds and, and the cold. Um, Tyrael stands up and begins to pull himself together as as he kind of reminds himself that, oh, yeah, I, I need to be a leader here. Um, says, uh, we will all convene and speak on this tomorrow. Once we have all had some rest, I... And he starts to tear up. I am sorry this has happened to you. Yeah. We clearly did not have a grasp on our own. <sighs> and uh, Rochelle goes over to Tyrael and kind of pats him on the back, and we should go get some something to eat, yes? Um, Tyrael nods, and the legate uh, walks over towards the teleportation circle. What do you guys do? It, Wall's gonna like he's like finishing picking himself up from the ground. It's like there is no need to be sorry, friend. With this experience, <laughs> I have cut a god. <laughs> oh, oh, this is going to be fun. Your words kind of inspire Tyrion a little bit, and he wipes the tear from his eye, um, smiles, and says. We did make a blow. Uh, we I'm struck a blow. Surprised. Maybe there is... Maybe there is yardage to be gained yet. And, uh... You gain a point of inspiration, Wall. You I, I think I already have one. God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, did you know... Oh, you already have one. Okay, never mind. That's right. We all have one, except for... Mm, cool. Right. Well, you gain my... You gain the DM's inspiration. There you go. That's it. Ah, I have one. Beautiful. Okay. Um, the the legate approach the circle and uh, they are are lining up, um, kind of looking at you guys, expecting to do the same. If you do, mm -hmm. is there anything? Get like, me in the, the fuck out still? of here. Say say that like, again. The, uh, is there anything? Is there anything still in the circle? Like the body or anything like remains? I'm gonna. Uh, like, no, actually, to... the uh, when you saw the visage of Lolf begin to. Uh, apparate in front of you, it consumed Edo's body. Uh, it is oh. gone. Uh, there is no remainder of Baron Edo the Elder, and it seems like Tyr that's that's kind of why Tyrael is crying. This is like, you know, this is this happened at basically the funeral, the the the, the yeah, the, uh, parting of the soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he's he seems a little lost, but um, it's strange how you guys have kind of pulled this team together. Uh, in the end, you guys. That was really cool, honestly. Um, so, you get together in the teleportation circle, and Actually, wait, hold on. Before yeah, what we would you like leave, to do? Uh, th is this a real table on the map? Yeah, that's a real table. Everything I... here you see is actually there. Can I take a look at it? Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, make an investigation check as everybody kind of assumes the position on the teleportation circle. Hold on, mm -hmm. yeah. Pre Are you uh, looking guess... for something or just looking? I, 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 uh, yeah, I just want to see what's on it. You know. Okay. Uh, no, sorry, investigation. Nice little zero. <laughs> Seven. Okay, you see this. Uh, you see this roll of black parchment um, that has like gold kind of filings baked okay. into the actual parchment itself. Um, you see some small writing utensils. Uh, you see several onyx obelisks that are about six inches long uh, that were used in the ritual itself to summon Lolf. They have been returned here to this plinth. Um, you see five different scrolls, uh, and that's about it. Um, you'd have Can to yoink take it all? some of it to look further. If you, you want to yoink it all, you got to remember gonna... you have it. Yeah, okay. Let me see. What do I okay. got? I got a black scroll. Okay. And then six 
little obelisk voice. It's like the what is six it? obelisks. What is that? Na- what is that one TV show where you like look for the, you like force kids to go into a labyrinth and look for monkeys? Oh, what? Uh, Legends of the Hidden Legends Temple? of the Hidden Temple. <laughs> That's the one. Wow, yeah, no, this is fucking shining <laughs> shit. <laughs> Activating then, lizard brain memory. <laughs> a few other scrolls. Yeah, just a few. You have five yeah, assorted five. scrolls. You haven't read them. You don't know what they are. Cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna t- steal them all. I don't care. Okay, you take them all. There you go. Six obelisks. Um, you took the roll of black vellum, right? And yep. then uh, the five scrolls, and that was all that was really there. Um, and that you even you searched the immediate area about around it as well, probably about ten feet surrounding this plinth, and that was all you found. That's fine. Okay. I'll take it before cool. it gets cleaned up, you know. Yeah, of course, dude. The looting is the name of the game. You didn't get any loot from that fight. What? Crazy. Hey, you got loot that and though. Scoot, man. Loot and scoot. Yeah. All right. Uh, mm-hmm. so you all assume the position on the teleportation circle and. As you guys form this circle, it you feel an energy about you. Uh, you make eye contact with this small party that you have assembled over the past two days, and the legate who have been thrust into a geopolitical uh, conundrum. Um, and it seems like there's this sense of unity between you all for just a little bit as darkness takes the tower and appear where you guys had left um there was a there's still a roaring fire there there's some you know nicer furniture around uh this is the the base level of the tower the door is still open a cold breeze is flowing in it smells of firewood and uh a little bit of like weird body funk coming from outside um but that's about it what do you guys do Mm -hmm. so where are we now Um, with the we're, 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 you're the at the base level of the tower. No, you're you're at the base. Yeah, yeah, you're at the base level of the tower where you guys initially went up to the top. Mm-hmm. Okay. That room we got stuck in. <laughs> yeah, the room you got stuck in. The door that you couldn't open. Yeah. Um, <laughs> whoops. Uh, Tyrael uh, adjusts himself and nods to the other Legate members. Uh, we are be- we are going to go to the uh, the financial district. Try and lay low for a few hours before I head back to my home. Um, the heart says, I'm going to go check on my children. I have no idea mm. if they have been affected by any of this. Children. And then uh, Rochelle says, Well, I think we know who killed Baron Edo. So I'm out of a job. He looks at, uh, they look at Argentum. We should talk. We should. I've been meaning to come find you. Things have just been rather hectic, as you can assume. You know each other? Yes. No. Huh. Yeah. And Rochelle shakes her head, like, vigorously. No, we don't. <laughs> and May, adju- like, shakily, her hand be- like approaches the bridge of her nose as she adjusts her glasses, um, which have kind of been askew from the craziness on the top of the tower, and says... I am to resume my post and see if my soldiers are still. Well, we have some interrogations to do. Needless to say, Tyrael, do I have your blessing? Uh, yes, of course. Um, we need to suss out any additional spies that Veyram may have. Uh, as unfortunate as the process is, we lost our interrogator. Ken. He is gone. I. He was a friend. I can't believe I trusted him. (sighs) You are free to do what you will in the city or abound, but I will see you tomorrow in my office. And he looks very serious and and literally, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you need an escort back to your home by any chance? He looks at the heart and says, I think, I think Hart has that covered. All right. Hmm. I just wanted to make sure you were safe. We haven't seen, um, Alistair, was that the name? Yeah. Alistair. The old guy. We haven't seen him since the storage units a few hours ago. At this he point. left you. He left early, I yeah. He said he don't... had some... Mm. Maybe he went maybe back to some... read, uh... 
read his, uh, you know, his picture book with his kid or something. Was it, it may have something to I do with write. his child, yes. He's very protective of her. We were, we were attacked as soon as we resurfaced. By whom? Nearby. Well, like, likely those who follow Varum. Your uh, friend, Kin? Old friend, Kin? Ex-friend? They stabbed me. Folks. Twice. Yes. He was my best friend. Oh. Well, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. It is. Friends come and go. Drow live long life. I'll, I'll make some more. Uh, we should get going. And he begins to walk out of the tower. Mm. Remember, Tyrael. <laughs> you will be stronger after all of this. He nods to Zeph, and as you say, be safe, Argentum, he looks back to you. Edo had a saying. He would sign it. The end of every missive, every letter, every declaration. Be safe. Be quick. Be good. I wish you all the best, and I will see you on the morrow. <coughs> I need a drink. And he and the remaining uh, legate slowly <laughs> begin to leave the area. Uh, the heart gives a nod to uh, the wall. Um, Rochelle wall maintains eye returns, contact with him. He returns the nod. Mm. Uh, Rochelle maintains eye contact with, with Argentum um, until... She turns her head and leaves, and uh, May disregards pretty much everybody uh, and diverts her eyes and then and leaves as well. So if you guys are alone in this tower as as they have uh, exited. Wall is going to pull out this sword that he used, and he's going to okay. examine it a bit more carefully, because <laughs> you slowly unsheathe uh, the sword. Um, it is light. In your hand, incredibly light, even for your immense strength. It almost feels like you're wielding a needle um, or, or nothing at all. Um, what would you like to check out about it? Like, can I figure out what it's made out of? Like, w like why was it that, that this sword had that effect on uh, on Veron? Okay. Uh, make a... Let's see. Is there any way I can help if he's doing this nearby? Yeah, if you guys would like to yeah, make he's doing this very like he's not hiding this at all. Okay, cool. I'd love to assist, um, especially if I can feel its magic. Of course, of course. Uh, Wall, will you make a religion check with advantage because Zeph is is, is also examining this with you? 80. But it is your sword. Religion check with advantage, you say? Well, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have inspiration too, if you yeah. if you if you uh, end up using that. What does an eleven work? <laughs> this is not will, hard. Will you take it? This is not terribly hard uh, to notice. Um, you don't you don't seem to glean everything, um, but you discover that this is a special make. This is a special smithing of this sword. It has uh, dents in the actual blade of it. It is not smooth or sleek. It, it looks like it has been pounded out. Um, but this is a this is a forge method. You know that is only done with a metal called true silver. And uh, it, it seems to, the the blade seems to be made of true silver. Uh, and this Zeph, you relay this information that uh, true silver is uh, one of the many uh, one of the many ways that the goddess Elastre, uh manifests herself on the material plane. It is kind of like a a, a divining rod or a um, uh, a lightning rod or something, a, a way to, to, to channel divine energy. Um, people make uh, religious uh, symbols out of it. They make statues out of it. Uh, they gild clothing in it. You know, there's all sorts of ways that you can use true silver. Um, but it, it seems to be closely asso associated with this silver sister, the Lady of Blades, as mm. uh, she has been told in your in your thoughts wall has um has so do they does whoever is telling me this i guess zeph is telling me do mm -hmm. does, yeah, yeah do they mention the lady of blades like specifically that name oh i'm sure yeah uh there are th that is one of the many names that illustrate goes by um and uh 
I guess, Zeph, you, you relay specifically, uh, she is the bladed dancer, the dancer of blades. You know, she is so quick and so precise and uh, effortless in her movement. It almost seems like she is dancing in the battlefield. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it could not be a coincidence. This, this is all exactly as it it is supposed to be. The, there is no other explanation for this. The rule of blades, it is leading me to greater strength, to greater glory. This is, this is the path that I must take. Someone, uh, yeah. ex explain what's going on here. Oh, 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 there is much for me to explain, I think, but oh no, you must only know that there is all, there is good things happening, I think. <laughs> you I really see. cleaned up out there. I mean, you know, how about we we, let's, we should treat you, hmm? You know, what I know I'm say? holding the payment until the job is done, but we should go get a treat, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> what do you say we all go get a drink? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yes, that's a fine drink with fine food. Oh, I want a, a, a steak dinner with with roasted potatoes as Anything well. Anything you want. You can eat the entire tavern out. <laughs> ah, yes. Come, let us go. Let us go quickly. Amazing. You guys, I mean, uh... Different in a lot of places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you guys rush out of the tower uh, with a little bit of speed. Um... Where would you like to go? Uh, you can make it through. There are, there are. Let me, let me get the city stuff back up. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Yeah, get the get the map out so we can all see where we're going. <laughs> I'm trying to. I have. Oh, and then that? I will no longer be lost. Me in me out of character, lost all the time. Me in character. <laughs> Also, lost. I know exactly. Also where I'm lost. <laughs> okay, so there are there are several uh, there are several districts. Um, you have the financial district, uh, which is where all of the like power players are, uh, the money lenders, the the, the bank, um, the uh, legal is stationed there, the law and law enforcement, the guards. Um, you have the trade district, which is just that building that you were in in the first session, that massive like market building. Um, that was kind of retrofitted into this ceremonial hall, huge place. Um, and then you have the uh, uh, you have the harbor district, um, which is what you guys were in when you went to go and do the uh, um, storage closets and storage units. Um, you have the uh, the field that is just outside of the walls, which is where all the the serfs and uh, the farmers and everyone live. And then you have the residential district uh, where the yuppies and uppity people live. Um, and uh, yeah, so where would you guys like to go? And you can, oh, there's the White's Rest that's just outside, which is like a small town in and of itself, uh, where you guys were uh, at the beginning of the game. Yeah, the very, very beginning. The world has opened up. You've unlocked the world map. Let's go. <laughs> we're out of the prologue, the tutorial. We did it. We can press M. Do we get a level? <laughs> we can <laughs> press M. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, mm. Yeah. You're the You're local from, guy. Yeah? <laughs> what would you recommend? You've been rather quiet throughout all of this. Well, considering that was my first time being that close to a god and demigod, and left rather speechless. Ah, uh, there's a tavern not that far from here. I say that we go there. It's a spot sure. that I like to frequent. Sounds I'm, good to me. <laughs> I'm kind of in the yeah. lead. That's uh, that's three zero on on Veyron trying to kill me. <laughs> yeah, there is indeed a tavern. Um, uh, would you guys like to go to this this tavern? Yeah. And then, yeah. Okay. All right. Collectively, uh, you guys are going to head to the Silken Vale Inn. Uh, Ooh, it is a it is a more upscale tavern uh, that kind of prides itself on its ambiance and the exclusive clientele that it entertains. And uh, it also offers a, you, you, you relay this information, obviously, uh, Sunder, but it also offers a variety of exotic beverages. Um, so oh you guys make your way there. Um, it is in the residential district, as of course it is. It is a, uh, a more uppity clientele, very exclusive place to get in. Um, and there appears to be a line to get into the Silken Vale Inn. It's not that long. There's about three people, there's three humanoids in line. As you get closer, you see one is an orc, 
Uh, one is a drow, and then the other one just seems to be a human man uh, dressed in fine uh, attire. Uh, the orc seems to be dressed in less than fine attire. Uh, it's He's got like a, a, a jerkin on, um, some leather pants and boots covered in mud. Uh, the human is dressed very well uh, in velvet, uh, purple, dark purples and blacks. Um, they have very black lipstick on. They have tattoos. Um, they, they look very adorned. Um, and then uh, the drow in the middle is just your, your, your run-of-the-mill drow that looks like they're ready to get into, you know, they're, they're ready for a night out. Um, kind of like uh, this light purple uh, uh, blouse on, and uh, she's... You know, got a dress or a skirt on that goes down to the ground. Um, there's this velvet rope uh, that is keeping them in line, and uh, that's about it. There's no real bouncer or anything like that. The door is just closed. Hmm. This usual you see... for the spot? Sunder? Yeah, I usually do come here. I've never seen a line move. Usually there's not as many people sitting out here. The door is closed, Sunder, too? Sunder, make a history check for me. Gotcha. Oh boy. Minus one. Yay. An eight? An eight. You feel like you remember there's another way in, but you don't know where it is. The buildings in this part of town kind of merge together. There's like breezeways, like wooden breezeways in between each of the buildings, so it's hard to tell where you are sometimes. And you've been in all these buildings, but uh, you don't really remember where the door is. Uh, if, if there's a back door. Mm. So there should be another way in. I'm just not entirely familiar as to where it was. It's been a while since I've been here. What's wrong with the front uh, door? Did you say there was a line? Yeah, it's in, in, in about five minutes past as you yeah, guys kind line. of meander around the outside of this inn. One person walks out, a thin drow male walks out, uh, adjusts himself, um, and then promptly starts to stumble. <laughs> Uh, and tries to straighten himself <laughs> up again. Um, and then he stumbles down into the throng of people that are passing in both ways. Uh, yeah, um, and then the um, the orc that was first in line goes in, um, kind of gives the guy who stumbled a little weird, like, <sighs> scoff, um, laughs at it a little bit, and then goes inside. Uh, as soon as they open the door, though, you guys are hit with this wave of really sweet perfumes. Um, you can smell... Uh, sweet meats being boiled and brewed and grilled, uh, fresh vegetables being cut. You hear laughter on the inside. Herbs and spices slap your nose. It's 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 very welcoming in there. The line moves. Oh, well, I've got plenty of silver bars to get us in right away, but I don't mind waiting. <laughs> Again, I don't that's use not exactly glory, something but... you should be. Loving. Flash around, yeah. What are they gonna I do? Agree. Stab me? Yes. Uh, yes, they would. They <laughs> Hasn't would worked so far. Plus, I got all of you. Zip right out. Uh, <laughs> of stabbings. Ah. Uh, <laughs> stab. Um, whatever. Whatever happened to those mercenaries? The mercenaries? Yeah. The ones they, that you. They end up following us, or, or what? Because they oh, said that oh, they uh, get us on our way through? out. Yeah. Well, they didn't know that this crazy shit was going to happen at the top of the tower. Um, and as you walked out, there was like nobody in the immediate <laughs> <makes> area <laughs> for like maybe 50 to 75 feet. And the, where you guys had seen them, gone. Okay. Just the fire has been put out. It was just smoking. Uh, yeah, they, they seem to have down. vacated the area pretty quickly. Okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, unless you guys want to try anything, I'm down to wait in line. But really fine with waiting in line if needed. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm getting in there. Door getting opens. In uh, a couple of drow women who are giggling and laughing and uh, slumped over one another, helping each other up, peel <laughs> back into the throng. Uh, very bright, vibrant, young faces. They can't. They couldn't be more than for a drow. They couldn't be more than forty or fifty years old. Um, and uh, it looks like they had a fantastic time. The line moves. The uh, uh, yeah. While we're in line, can I pull out one of these scrolls? Sure, you can, can like, pull out one of these scrolls. See if I can, uh, you know, see if I can. Oh hell it. yeah! Can you? Roll? It's like a toilet material, you know. Can you roll a D four for me? One D four. Got to figure out which one of these it is. Yay, four. Four. Okay, let me get back to the sheets. 
Uh, you know, Ripley's Believe It or Not, you know, when you're sitting on the theater for like 30 minutes. Mm. Getting a couple of hemorrhoids. <laughs> hemorrhoids, my favorite <laughs> time. What, dog? Hell oh, yeah, dude. All right. Let's see. Okay, number four. One, two, three. Listen, guys, for your own HP, uh, for your own HP, for your own, you know, yeah, for your own HP, make sure you don't uh, just sit on the toilet for more than like 10 minutes. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Um, so you peel open one of the scrolls. I used the word peel like eight times today. You uh, unroll <laughs> one of the scrolls um, and you look at it. It's really, this, this this paper it's made out of is kind of tough to peel back. I said it again, kind of tough to pull back uh, and, 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 and make straight so that the, the words are able to be discerned. Um, what languages do you read? Oh, but wouldn't you like to know? Wouldn't I like to know? <laughs> yeah, I would like to know. I mean, I, uh, I mean, I would Can also like to know. read it? Uh, co common and undercommon. Okay. Well, this is in. Uh, you recognize this as abyssal. <laughs> okay. Cool. Sick. You can't read any of it. If you spend some time, you may be able to pick out a word or two, but uh, the first scroll you unrolled is in abyssal, and you can't read it. That's cool. I'm gonna put it away, and I'm gonna turn to the rest of the to the party here. The line has moved, as you guys are in line, I imagine, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah the line has moved, um, and a person has entered. Two people have exited again. This time, two will look to be uh, town guards. Uh, again, falling over each other, laughing, having a great time. It's like 7.30, 7.45 p.m. This is uh, close of business, but it's the beginning of business for a lot of the... Uh, like seedier establishments around here, including this bar, the, um, what is it, the Silken Vale? You said the Silken Vale. Silken Vale, Silk and vale yeah. in, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, you guys are next in line. Um, you got about five minutes until you're let in. Hey guys, uh, yeah, uh, before we get in here, uh, I thought maybe I'd pass around some party favors. Uh, and I'm gonna give, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm pull, uh, pull up the obelisk. I'm like, okay. I just snag these while I was up there kind of cool you guys want one sure they catch Anyone the light in a very any? strange way what do you are those from the ritual yeah i snagged everything on the table of course you did <laughs> i mean listen guys um this might be important i mean i have the things on there might be important and if you leave things out at a crime scene you know suffice to say next day Someone comes and cleans it. So. Listen, um, obelisks. You do have uh, a point. Like black obelisks. Yeah, yeah they're like six-inch black, black obelisks. Uh, they Isn't may that, be. That's just what they use normally at the rituals, to do the circle. The hell if I know. Do you? Uh, you would know, Zeph. These yeah, are I'm just. Them yeah, yeah. These are just. Uh, like again, these are just divining rods for. It's basically telling where magic to go. Um, it's like a prism, mm -hmm. uh, but a prism for negative energies. Oh, huh. maybe it could be useful. Yeah. Yeah, it's a neat You don't detect that it's magic innately or anything like that, but it, it it's definitely a tool. Let you hold on to mine though, because my pockets are full with silver bars. Oh, <laughs> flex a little harder. All right, Mr. Silver Bars. <laughs> you can call me that if you want. <laughs> The door opens. <laughs> door opens. You hear uh, uh, a, a raucous laughter from the inside. A big, uh, a set, big round of applause. Something just fell off my wall. Wait, wait, hold on a bar in your pocket, or you just uh, you know? <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> One of my things just fell off my wall. Hold on a second. I gotta no. Oh no! <laughs> no. The giant, the the giant Alpha Anarchy sign. No. <laughs> Yeah, the Alpha Anarchy sign fell off. Fell. My arcade machine fell over. Fell over, over yeah. Jusa did die. Well, goodbye, Jusa. You died at your, uh, your video engine died. My video engine died. It's still okay, up for me, is which dead. is weird. All right, so uh, you guys... Come back. The door opens. Uh, a group of, like, four or five dudes, uh, like, drow men... Uh, fall out. Uh, a couple of them are drunk. Two or three of them are pretty sober, just kind of like, hey, man, there's conversations of, like, we got to get home. My wife's going to be upset with me. I've got work in the morning. You know, there's this, like, 
some of them may have over imbibed uh as as one's peeling ah stop saying peel as one's uh <laughs> at least i'm aware of it as one is starting to move around the velvet ropes and into the throng of people that is pushing uh in either direction he just vomits in the street a couple of people are just like what the fuck is wrong with you um but yeah you guys are free to go in these guys have no idea right. there's thousands of riders underneath the city yeah no, they have no <laughs> idea it reminds me of that the meme of the dude with. in the party. They don't know I'm a drider. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, you all go in at once. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, you enter the Silken Vale Inn. Uh, this inn is nestled in a pretty shadowy corner of the residential district, but it's an establishment that uh, has. Almost like an allure of Lolth herself. There's this like strange beauty, um, this 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 the softness to it. Um, it's got it has the dark stone on the outside. Um, there's like this white web-like filigree, kind of keeping it up, almost like a colonial home. And uh, when you enter it, you are just overwhelmed by an ambience of elegance and mm. intrigue. Right? It is dimly lit. Uh, they're, they're dimly lit by softly glowing black crystals that exude this strange white light. Um, they cast this ethereal webbed patterns on the, on the floors. The air, again, is perfumed with incense and uh, this otherworldly, extra planar charm. The furnishings are of a dark, almost black wood with some silver accents, plush velvet cushions. They absorb the sound, so as soon as you walk in, it feels homey. It feels comforting. It feels lived in. Um, the common room itself is covered with pillows. Uh, it's on the floor. There's rugs on the floor. Uh, there's nooks and Ooh. private booths. Uh, each one is separated by like thin gossamer silken uh, curtains. That's what the word is. Um, there's you know people behind whispering, taking meetings. There's quiet contemplation being had. There's people uh, too far in their cups in the corner. Uh, it's this is craftsmanship. This is a rich place. This is this is very expensive. Um, the innkeeper, uh, they are behind the bar with a bartender. Uh, it seems the two of them are moving back and forth with grace uh, that shows that they're aware of everybody and what's going on in the inn. They know exactly what's happening. Uh, but at the same time, they've got a business to run, right? So they're very fluid in their motions. Um, you can see behind them an exotic array of liquors and potions and unguents and uh you know of all colors green purple red blue uh and the bar itself is a solid slab of uh obsidian blackstone uh, that has been polished and uh you can almost see yourselves in it uh let's see what else are there any other descriptions here but yeah basically this place feels very i mean not evil, but you know, there's there's shit happening here. This is where the the the, the veins of the city converge in the uh, pumping underbelly. Uh, it's a nexus of uh, politics and power plays and intrigue, uh, and yeah, that's what you see in the immediate area. There are a few people of note that kind of stand out to you. Um, ooh, there's ooh, a yes. there's a stern, uh, imposing, military almost esque. Uh, person who is in the corner. Um, he is talking to a drow that is covered in silk from head to toe, this white silk that, and even like a veil that covers um, her eyes. Uh, you see her mouth move and she smiles as she's talking to this uh, military-esque uh, guy. Um, you have the, the innkeeper himself um, who is almost like a black shadow that is moving it is an entity you see this like almost humanoid entity moving behind the barkeep at the bar um picking up drinks putting them away picking up people's tabs um checking people into the inn um it's not necessarily you can't see a face or anything but it's this like black robed smoky figure that's moving back and forth behind the barkeep um there are more people around but you got to get in to get a closer look Whew, that was a lot of description i gotta go pee really Fucking quick God. awesome right though well I'm done. Good. Yeah, I agree. I'm in it. I'm immersed. All right. You're immersed? Yeah, I'm immersed. In liquid. I'll talk funny, I'm okay, man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm immersed too, man. Spinder. 
It's <laughs> Spinder. Spinder. <laughs> Also, well, Juzo, thank you so much for posting the meme. In there. Dude, I, yeah. like, Wait, I hold heard on. that and I was like, I'm gonna make this really fast. So I did. <laughs> I ran to one of my sites and I was like, I'm gonna fucking just type this out. Do, do either who wants to lead the uh, little uh, little beginning of our our party I'm experience? Open my He's here. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. okay. Hit right, okay. champ. That was a fast. Who do what when? I, I guess we're gonna. Wall's gonna to try and. Yeah, find us a find us a table. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's easy enough. You don't have to make any sort of check for that. You see, in in, in one of the far corners, um, there are there's a there's a booth there um, with one of those gossamer curtains that goes back and forth. Um, it is. Uh, quilted luxury on the inside. You have a nice table that looks like it's been a, a, a like a retrofitted ship's wheel that's been polished and lacquered, smoothed off. Um, a couple of people have left their drinks here. Uh, it doesn't look like anybody has come by to, to, to like wipe this place off, but it's free. Fits about five of you, which may be four because wall. Um, but this seems to be not secluded, but it's off in a corner that's got, you know, pillows around it. So you're your 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 speech will be dimmed to everybody this else my around. Makeshift sound uh, recording. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, how? I'm just curious. How different does this place feel compared to the actual presence of Loth that we just experienced? Uh, it it doesn't it doesn't seem like it has anything to do. Like you're you're a you're a man of the cloth, so to speak, a man of the web. Um, mm. it is. It is. It is all flair. It's all style over substance. Um, there is no real presence of Lolf or any sort of religious uh, of course, of course. entity. It's kind of like, you know, they are adapting or, or, or uh, co-opting the aesthetics of Lolf in order to drive <laughs> clientele. Gotcha. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, I just want to sit down in there and, uh, you know, as soon as someone comes up, demand everything that they have on the menu. <laughs> Demand everything, everything they have on the menu. What? Yeah, how much would that cost? Uh, you guys all sit down. What do you What do you guys do? Yeah, well, I'll sit down as well. Yeah, I mean, the wall's gonna like pull up a chair or something. Yeah, you can like sit on the edge. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> he knows that he's not gonna fit into that booth. Yeah, it's just a typical circular booth. It does fit all four of you very comfortably, and then wall on the outside, kind of like blocking vision, right? Yeah, um, the do you guys pull the curtain back? Not not that it matters, but like, <laughs> I, I'm picturing Probably. it. A little bit of okay. privacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shh. You pull the curtain back, and uh, it seems like you guys are alone. Um, it doesn't look like anybody was following you or paid too much attention to you as you came in. You mm. did get a nod from the bartender, uh, and no response from pretty much anybody else. They've been enthralled in their own clandestine conversations. Zephyrael, darling, I do <sighs> need to apologize. <laughs> For what? We got off on the wrong foot, and I was rather quick to judge your fears of things we were facing earlier, so oh. <laughs> I do apologize for my uh, unpleasantness. Don't worry about it. I'm used to the um, assumptions. <laughs> the assumption. <laughs> what did you think, though, being that close to the... Uh some sort of visage of the Spider Queen herself and her son, that miscreant. Is he listening? It's fine. We have the curtain. Yeah, that'll stop it. <laughs> yeah, the curtain, the curtain will stop the demigod. <laughs> you know? I, mean, I, 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 I doubt he's going to, you know, get into a spat with his mother and then come to a random bar in the middle of town. I'm sure we're fine. I doubt he would fit in here anyway. Oh yeah. You get a size of him. Mm. He, he can get smaller though, right? He he, he, was he the... grew about four yeah. feet. They call him the master of the silent hunt, if I recall correctly. And you do. um, oh, he's mad. He's a master of many, many, many faces. So, if he was coming, I would. We probably wouldn't even notice. Hmm. Interesting. You know, like how when I got stabbed. Oh yeah. How are you feeling, by the way? Alive, which is enough for now. I will That's take good. alive. Nothing Still a little poisoned, so uh, weaker yeah. than you do look. Hopefully by the morrow. 
<laughs> yeah, nothing Fine. a good night's sleep can't fix. <laughs> we'll poison you with honey mead more than that. Nothing a ton of alcohol can't fix, just more poison, it'll balance it out. Interrupting your conversation immediately, this this uh, puff of smoke, a hooded figure, is right next to uh, the wall. He <laughs> doesn't move at all, but he just says, oh, yes. What is your selection of wine? He produces from inside of his stomach, he pulls out the smoky hand, long fingered, very, very manicured fingernails, black. Uh, as night drops a tablet on the, uh, the 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 round table in front of you, and on it is a list of stuff. Uh, cool. There is all sorts of uh, basic liquors, basic alcohols, and then if you flip it over on the other side, uh, there are tonics, tink tinctures, and unguents, um, things that you uh, incenses and things that you can uh, purchase to. Um, you know, burn at your table uh, to to you know make your skin shinier. You know, it's just different, yeah. um, fun, fanciful things. Um, Any general like yeah. costs on these guys, or yeah, it's relatively expensive for what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's like you know a silver piece um, baseline for pretty much everything. Give me just yeah. a second. Um, I have to find the document silver piece. that okay, I too made of this. Hold on. It is uh you know. Probably pretty expensive for the everyday working man. I, I always forget, like you know, how much money you like a normal person makes in a day in D and D because it's yeah. every campaign is like kind of different. Being D and D broke is a fucking experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you, and being D and D rich is also an experience because you're just yeah. like, yeah, I'll buy a we'll buy a ship. Let's just buy a ship. That's fine. Twenty five thousand gold. A, a fort. Yeah. I just need to know okay. how much food two pounds of silver bars can get wall. Oh my god. How much food two pounds of silver bars can get wall? Do you how do you present this to the uh, entity that's in front of you? Uh, I have the I have the I have the list of stuff by the way. Um will you remind me how much gold like how much gold two pounds of silver bars is worth? If you know. Uh off, let off me the top. ten so, silver pieces to a gold piece. Yes, yes, yeah. And there's a hundred silver pieces in one silver bar. It's about ten gold each. God, I'm 20, so bad at math. Twenty gold total for your two bars. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so two pounds. Two, two pounds. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Then I'll just present it as as, as if it were normal gold. Like, <laughs> how much food can we get with two hundred gold? Twenty. That's 20 what you gold. say to him. Twenty gold. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. Twenty yeah. gold. Okay. Twenty gold. Twenty, 20 gold. gold. <laughs> a Whatever. hand comes out of what would be the torso of this shadow entity and grabs the silver from you, leaving this like smoky trail behind that fades to nothing. Um, you also have the menu in front of you, which I will list off the names of the things there. And if you would like to buy them or purchase them, um, that's your prerogative. Uh, there are some uh, under the heading that says like magical drinks or- um... All of it. <laughs> you have shadow mist brew, whisper wine, and uh, abyssal Ooh. absinthe. Ooh, I want that um, one, abyssal. Ooh. And then there's an unguents section uh, the moonlight okay. salve, some a silken balm which has like a little uh, asterisk kind of mark next to it. I like balm. And then the eclipse paste. Um, it doesn't really have too many descriptions of this. There's no description on the menu itself. Uh, and then you have a lotions section. Um, lotion. <laughs> they yeah. sell lotion at this bar. That's crazy. This is <laughs> fucking <laughs> awesome. Go. Oh, we're getting oiled up in the bar. Hell yeah. This is actually this is quite literally the best tavern I've ever been to in D and D. They have dusk flower cream, uh, the mantle of spiders lotion, and then yeah. there's this underworld unguent. It's like a super then, hookah bar. I would like to try the shadow mist brew. And the, what was the second lotion that you mentioned, DM? The second lotion was the Dusk Flower Cream, I think? E yes, I will do the Shadow Mist Brew and I will try the Dusk Flower Cream, please. Okay, hmm. just a second. So that will be, um, he opens his palm and then kind of curls it as, as though he's beckoning for more money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how much do you need? Uh, let's see, let me do some math here. So you can do some math. math. So, hey, those, so you those got the, silver bars you got were the... for, for Walt's food, okay? 
Yeah, the True. silver bars you gave were the, for the food, and you will get the food. But you got the okay. dust flower cream and the what else? Sorry. And the uh, shadow mist brew. Shadow mist brew. Okay. Uh, that uh, it's only. That's only ten silver pieces. Oh, okay. Let me just. Five silver it. pieces of a piece. Five silver yeah. pieces a piece. I probably should have asked this way earlier, but how much money do we start with individually? I will pass that over. It depends I... on your background. It oh, depends on your background. Stuff. I'm like, I started with 15 because my author background. Just so you know, Ben, Jenny just tried to call me telling me that everybody's going to be at round one. <laughs> and I'm just like, I know, I'm with the Ben. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I know. Um, okay, so take... the entity, you give him the you give him the money or equivalent, correct? Yes. Okay, so he curls that up in his black hand. Um, it goes back into his uh, his robes, I guess. They kind of fluctuate between fabric and smoke. Um, bows pretty deeply and then disappears and you see him about 30 feet away appear behind the tavern as he begins to put things together um, you guys got some time before the food arrives wait I, uh, well, uh, like I'm looking whilst looking through the menu is there he's somebody that sampled many a fine wine mm -hmm. is there a fine wine on this menu that he can he knows and recognizes uh, make a history check oh you ask too much of this <laughs> small Minus simple Minus one. Man. No, it's zero. Oh! <laughs> Got a nat one? That is yeah. a Let's go, No, boy. this is... God. Like, you're Great. you're more accustomed to the, the, the warming alcohols. Uh, the... the, the uh, when you imbibe them, they, they fill you with, with a fire in your belly. Um, it looks like all of these seem to have some sort of chilling property. Um, and you're not quite used to that. You, you, uh, there's, there's nothing here that you really recognize. Some of it sounds pretty cool, um, but nothing that you would immediately recognize. What's the most expensive wine on the menu? The most expensive <laughs> wine on the menu is the Abyssal Absinthe. Um, you would imagine. Mm. There's no real prices. <laughs> it doesn't tell. It's one of those places uh, um, that doesn't tell I'm you the price on the menu. But you would imagine, based on your, uh, you know, sommelier experience. Uh, that the Abyssal Absinthe is probably the most expensive. I also want that one, so I would love to get yeah. us both one. Yeah. Abyssal Absinthe? Mm -hmm. I would also like one. Okay. So okay, three. Maybe three. The... Is there anything on the table? Sunder, do you want an Abyssal Absinthe? No, nah, Ab I'll take a Shadow Mist. <laughs> okay. Okay, is there What's anything on the, on the table? On the uh, table? Gold? I'll, okay. I'll toss in a gold piece. The lie. entity pops up next to uh, the wall. A very controlled sort of like apparition. Um, and with him is a a feast. Um, you have Ooh. several fully dressed chickens. Um, you have a few haunches of ribs. Uh, you have a couple of steaks. Uh, there are potatoes and fixings. There's asparagus. Um, you have, uh, it's all like, you know, uh, squeezed with gray tarts everywhere it, it looks this is extravagant um there is there is food enough here for wall twice over and then ret for for you guys too this is uh, <laughs> a lot of you you paid a lot you're just like how much yeah. this give me and he's like all right <laughs> all right um, so yeah this is this is gorgeous it smells beautiful um there even seem to be a couple of people looking at you guys from around <laughs> the other sides of the bar uh kind of inspecting and, and, and smelling themselves like oh my gosh this is they're interested this is what, 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 what is going on over there you've drawn attention because you guys got a lot of fucking food um it's like when somebody brings your plate of sizzling fajitas right yeah, yeah. And you're just like whoa look at that okay yeah, that's what i'm talking here. about yeah um and they also bring uh with you know it's, it's also assorted with your drinks um you have the uh you've got the shadow mist brew right uh argentum mm -hmm. Um, in front of you is a glass, a wine glass, but inside is a swirling dark liquid that almost... God, it fell again! Okay, never mind. Um, a swirling dark liquid that seems to absorb the light. Um, and uh, it's served in this, like, chiseled crystal wine glass. Um, you, and it's just like this swirling, like, almost a galaxy on the inside, but it's sucking in light around it. Looks like Vanta Black almost. Nothing light is not bouncing off of it. As um, soon as they get it, they will pull out their book and start describing, like writing, like 
frantically as they're looking at it, almost like they're describing it or something. Okay, I don't know cool. what I'm doing. And then they will drink it. Okay. This is like the, you drink the, the it. fantasy version of like an Instagram, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are we going to take a picture of it first? Oh, yeah, I need to take a, um, a picture of it first. You take a sip of it and it is chilled. Very, very, very chilled. Um, you, you drink it. It almost feels a little bit acidic as it goes down. Um, but then on the, on, the, on the aftertaste, when you like blow it through your nose and, you know, get a proper taste of it, cherries, grape, citrus. It's like this very, very potent fruit juice that is like very citrus and like uh, uh, acid forward. Um, it tastes delicious. Uh, and you, when you open your mouth, you see that <laughs> Argentum's teeth are black. Um, <laughs> but state. only for a short, uh, for, only for a short duration. Point and um, laugh. I mean, I don't see it, but point and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and you guys also, you also got dust flower cream. Uh, there's this small uh, metal, it looks pretty worn, but it looks like this is a, a container that is reused by the establishment. Um, uh, it's got their seal on it. It's this webbed pattern. Uh, it's this black metal, uh, what is it called? You know, the little, like, like you, what you would put cream in this little, like a little uh, tin. container. A little tin of it, yeah. Um, you open it up and yeah, there's this fragrant, uh, lotion that is very soft to the touch. It's not this like hard puck or anything like that. Um, and it smells of sweet flowers. Uh, there's a citrus note to it, bergamot. Um, it's 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 wonderful. Uh, and oh. it, it does look like you're supposed to put it on your skin. Yeah, they will uh, rub it into their hands and like a little like on their like neck and stuff like that okay. and just kind of try it out. Okay. Uh, you rub it on and you feel a little bit, you feel a little bit better about yourself. You feel a little bit more confident. Um, you know, you walk in and you're gonna smell wonderful uh, uh, to, to everyone around. Um, this, uh, it is something that you probably have read about. Uh, this is uh, a favorite among drow like diplomats and spies. They wear it because it, it makes them more confident. It makes them feel better magically so. Uh, distilled from a from a rare flower that only blooms in the underdark when moonlight hits it. Okay. What else did you guys get? Uh, we the three so three of us got the abyssal one, and then Sunder got, also got the same drink. That okay? The abyssal absinthe sits before you. It's this deep, like indigo spirit. There's a very small <laughs> amount of it in there, maybe two or three fingers worth. Um, and it glows faintly. Uh, the 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 uh, the shadow mist brew is kind of absorbing the light that comes off of this uh, this absinthe that three of you have gotten. Um, and do you drink it? Uh, Wall, yeah. Wall's gonna pick oh. up the uh, the glass that it's in and like carefully inspect the liquid, <laughs> getting an eye of of what what it exactly it has. Okay. Uh, you hold it up to your face and you very faintly hear a just like a whine coming like like coming from the glass itself it's very distant and uh, uh, very faint but you, there's a sound it's emitting a sound um, it emits a sound yeah very very faint sound but you only hear it when it, when it, when it gets closer to you um, I heard alcohol talks but god damn do you want to make a, an investigation check or you know like a survival check I mean, yeah, uh, I'll, I'd be down. While while okay. he's doing this check, he's he's swirling the uh, the the glass, uh, okay. the, the wine in the glass. Check. He's so fancy. Yeah, this guy's fancier than me. Jesus. <laughs> Too bad. Dark. Yeah. Let me see. A nine. A nine. Um. You've had liquors that are in this small amount before, and in your experience, it's not enough for you. You're, you're huge. You need a little bit more alcohol, but like, uh, this is, this, it's a shot, like, right? You know, feels like a shot. Hmm. Wall's gonna, like, take a, take a whiff, take a smell of the, uh, the swirled uh, thing. He's basically doing the, uh, the, the, the wine testers, the you know, the sommelier tech. <laughs> yeah. Dipping your nose in the glass. Um, you do, and you get hints of smoke and gunpowder. Um, it's very acrid, uh, but on the, on the, on the ass end of the scent, you get a little strawberry 
and um, it's quite pleasant on the on the uh, exhale. And then finally, Wall is gonna <laughs> take a take a sip of it, and like sit back and like close his eyes, and like you you, you just like fully fully engage his <laughs> taste buds to really <laughs> taste the flavor in this. Okay, you take you drink a whole thing, right? <laughs> No, oh, just, just a sip. Just, just a, a sip. sip. Just, a sip. just like right. a wine sip. Mm. Okay. Oh, make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll probably I'll probably raise my glass up as I like to begin a toast. I want to see what happens. Okay, to cool. Me. All right. So um, you raise your glass up, um, as does the wall, and, and, and he proceeds to take a sip. You feel your eyes get very heavy for a second. Um, it's almost as though like you've stood up too fast and the blood rushes to your legs and you're just like, whoa, okay. And you're fine. That was actually quite pleasant. And like, uh, you know, something that one might entertain recreationally. Uh, good, good con save. <laughs> good con yeah. save. I'm, 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 I'm good. I like this progression of the nat one to the nine to the 23. That yeah, that's how it's <laughs> Growth. Excellent. Growth. And yeah, Always, I, uh... Wall, like, this is something that he did, like, right before he, he sniffed it, but Wall did lift just the slightest bit of his yeah. helmet. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just okay. to expose, um, like, the, uh, I'm looking. everything from his, like, top lip downward. Um, it's still kind of, it's still kind of, like, dark in here. Right. But you guys can see that his, like, chin and jawline is chiseled as fuck but also covered in scars like oh, very boy. old scars wow so you do yeah. lift it to eat huh you guys get a glimpse of the wall that's that's really special that's that's awesome yeah it must be nice okay. uh i raise my glass and i start to say <laughs> um ahem, to making powerful enemies and maybe even better friends question mark and then i down that shit Make a constitution save, Andrew. You drink the whole thing. Usually yeah. they say it the other way around, but... Okay, cheers yeah. to that. Zeph's gonna take the sip and then just immediately just <laughs> flop over on conscious. <laughs> Zeph's gonna die today. Let's see, I need okay. one good roll, man, please. 16, I got a 16. 16, oh my god. Go, 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 you drink go, go, go. the whole thing. Go, go, go. In one glug, you get the same notes on the front end. This, this, oh. this thick blast of gunpowder and smoke, and then you feel this very juicy cherry taste and uh, strawberry taste on on, on the uh, the back end of the gulp that you had just taken. You blow it through your nose and then you feel your eyes get heavy and what vision you had, what small grade vision you had fades for just a second. And then you wake up. Nothing averse happens, but you felt a little dizzy and that was kind of fun. A little more than, a little more dizzy than the wall felt, but you know, that was a little fun. Did you do that again? Yeah, cheers to that. <laughs> I will also drink. Con save. Con save. <laughs> really bad. Let's go. It's hot. It's hot. Really bad. <laughs> They've been getting worse and worse as we've been right. going on. So you, you, see, you see both of your friends, uh, you know, knock some back and have a, a fairly pleasant reaction to the, uh, the uh, what do we call it again? Dusk? Dusk brew? Well, Abyssal... Uh, the abyssal, abyssal absence. absence. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, do you drink the whole thing? No, I'm, I'm just taking a swig. You take a swig. Oh, strawberries on the exhale, and as you exhale, your vision fades. Your eyelids get too heavy to keep open, and your head goes limp. And what you see in front of you is Ooh. straight blackness. And then a door Let's opens. Go. In the blackness, oh, oh. and out Ooh. walks. Like in a mini game. <laughs> out walks your patron, rubbing oh, his fingers together, hand in one pocket, dressed to the nines, very wide lapels, a sharp cravat, pale skin, shoulder-length blonde hair tied up in a very loose top knot. As he begins to walk up to you. Holy shit, is that you? You are not doing your job. Uh, I, I mean, I kind of did my job. 
In what way? Oh, I mean, if you saw the situation out there, you would know that spring in there was not the right move. Hmm. Well, you might be right. Would've Tell me what you have ass. seen. Would have got my ass wiped and then handed to me, and then, you know, back here I am the next day. Uh, let's see. Top of the tower. Oh, they're doing some kind of ritual to seal away the spider queen. He disregards everything you're saying. And he puts his hand on your chest. And he says, I don't think you deserve this anymore. Wait, what? And you what? feel... You feel... As he pulls his hands back, this, like, strings for each spell you've been able to cast being plucked and cut and no, wait, ripped from on. your very body. And you wake up. <laughs> what the fuck? That was a glimpse into the dark recesses of your own mind. You might do that again. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it seems like, a, you know, oh, uh, yeah, different shit. strokes for different folks. You know, sometimes streams works and sometimes it really doesn't. You need to have a, a trip buddy, but like, uh, yeah. Hi. Can I cast false life on myself? <laughs> Phoenix, Phoenix touches his chest and you see a thin sheer film envelop his entire fleshed parts of his body um, that is exposed. Um, you cast false life on yourself. All right, cool. Everything I got five temp fine. HP. That's cool. Um, um, <laughs> oh, the, the drink was too strong for you. I mean, you need you. magic to be able to down the rest of it? Wait. No, just making sure <laughs> yeah. I still got it, you know? Oh, you're quite all right. Yeah. I'm all good. Honestly, it's, yeah, stronger than I thought, I'll be honest. <laughs> you should drink some of the wine from from my land, so they are excellent red wines. But we also have white wines, too. They are very good. Go down smooth, really s gentle on the palate. <laughs> Better than this, huh? I'm going to just uh, let's set it back down on the table. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Sunder, uh, first of all, is anybody, is everybody, you know, done eating and drinking? Would you like to continue? Well, Wall's been digging into it, his food, but yeah. Yeah, I imagine, his table, right? his table mm -hmm. manners are like <laughs> shockingly excellent. Oh my like gosh! He's, he's got he's got like the 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 napkin like over his lap. He's like eating like properly with a knife and fork. He's observing like he's always keeping a free hand like on the table instead of like oh, having cool. his uh, elbows on the table. Yeah. He's incredibly <laughs> well mannered when he's eating. The in stark contrast, Ray just like reaches over people, grabs things with his hands. <laughs> <laughs> but he's taking huge bites. Like, yeah. like he'll, he'll like very like, like elegantly cut like a gigantic piece of meat and then like shovel the whole thing <laughs> into his mouth. Like, oh, no. but like, it's still, like, it's still, it's still, yeah, but like still like the process is very, very elegant and refined. That's super cool. What a great image. Um, Zeph, you, you fumble around with your hands and uh, there's uh, your hands sink into some like gristle and fat and then they sink into some fluffy potatoes. And, <laughs> what is this, um, prime rib? Yeah, I mean, it, it looks and feels like it's been prepared very well. I mean, you notice, you notice garnishes as you reach around. Um, <laughs> lots of different ways that the meat has been prepared and uh, assembled, uh, tomahawk steak style stuff. You know, it's very fancy. Um, Amazing. But yeah, it's, and it's quite delicious. Um, you taste every single herb, every single spice. It's been prepared uh, incredible, incredibly uh, well for this, like, smaller establishment. Um, yeah. I feel like this place should be, you know, there's, you should see the kitchen, but you don't. Um, uh, Sunder, mm. would you make a perception check for me? I will indeed. See with your eyes. Four. Four. Dude, we should not okay. roll on this website anymore. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, wait, you're on. I'm doing on. fine. <laughs> Do you uh, are. Yeah, speak for yourself. It's fine. I'm having a bad roll day. It's fine. There's always going to be at least one. Listen, if it's like this next week, hate, dude, okay. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm going to lose it. Um, you don't 
Well, well you do. Um, you notice that uh, the two two military garbed men in the corner are talking to the uh, uh, the drow woman who has the veil over her face. Um, they've been looking at you, um, interspersed with conversation towards this uh, drow woman with the veil. Uh, they've had their hand on their weapon the entire time, but not in an aggressive way, almost in, in like a swaggery confidence kind of way where, you know, they're displaying to everybody uh, they have some status, um, they have a weapon, and uh, they are there. But they have been side-eyeing you guys. That's all you mm. notice. Okay, okay. So that's something that I notice. I think Sunder, at this point, is going to take his drink and kind of stand up a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. More so to propose okay. another toast. Okay. Oh, it's not very people. often. It's not very often that I come across a group such as yourselves. I've been around Kelly for months, and it's mostly just been him. I tend to frequent this bar myself, and only myself. Having some company for once is quite nice. I would like to propose a toast to new friends. And also, can I just say, Wall, you cutting the god was probably one of the coolest things I've seen in a very long time. I've never <laughs> seen someone come that close to a demigod, let alone me ever being that close to a demigod. I think this is, uh, this one's for you, big guy. And he was <laughs> down all of his brew in to one the go. Wall. Oh, nice. Ah, stop, stop. You are making Raise your me glasses blush. <laughs> to the, the hero of the day. Yeah. Uh, the wall. The wall. The only thing I ask is that you write stories about this, yes? <laughs> Even better. Uh, we can write songs. Oh, you had better believe I will be writing about this. Yes. Argentum, Please you don't. feel a claw at the back of your eyeballs, almost like this itch that you get too often, and you hear, where do I fit into all of this? Where do you want to fit into all of this? I don't know. Maybe I should... Uh, maybe I should take your place, yes? Just write about me in your stead. I will weave you into the story, I promise. You had better. Oh, I will. You can be... see on Argentum's face, like anyone around them can see they look, like, perturbed. Like they have, like, one of those, like, alcohol headaches where it's just, like, pinched face, just like, annoyed. <laughs> nah, it was too strong for you too, huh? <laughs> oh, yes. That's what it is. Hey, Sunder, speaking of Kelly, mm. what do you want to tell him? Yeah, I agree with that. What statement. do I want to tell him? I mean, it's better just to let him know what happened. I mean, we have nothing to really hide. We came up across something that was far greater than most of our knowledge. And I guess we solved the mystery hmm. too, huh? I would say so. We know where to go next if we ever you know, find out where this individual uh, veil around to. Mm -hmm. I, I personally like to go to the scene of the crime, and I need to speak to the sheriff as well as. Um, I would still like to investigate the other members on the. Uh, on that list that Kelly has. That's fair. Do some interrogation mm. now that the uh, seat is opened up. Absolutely. More information. The more information we have, the better. I don't think we should ask Tyrion about uh, Ken for a while, seeing as uh, it was his <laughs> best friend. That is unfortunate. And but lost his uncle and his best friend within the span of a couple weeks. I don't think yes. we should rope him back into this. No, so is my mm. is my first stop. Mm. But uh, I would like to investigate the scene of things. It might give us, I don't know, some information. I want to find out what Ken's why is. What was his reasoning for doing this? Why was he wanting to be involved with the demigod and all of that? There's there's always a reason. There's What's always a driving mean? force. Well, was the guy, uh, you know, a drow? I couldn't see. Yeah, he, he, he was yes. a drow. He was very much drow. He Could was. Could be just, uh, you know, 
alignment of uh, principles or something. Sounds like they had a little bit of a familial spat, so could be like a, you know, a racial thing. I believe so. Um, Zephrael, I feel like you'll be, uh, well, any information you have will be uh, helpful. You seem to know more about yeah. their culture yes. than we might. But first, Phoenix, I can't help but sense you haven't drink in your abyssal absent. Oh, I mean, if you'd like it, sure, go, go for it. Knock yourself out. <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay, make another con save. Nah, Turns one. out it's not nah, for me. One, nah, one. Nah, what? one. Six! <laughs> Pull it up! All right, Zeph, you feel that, you feel that uh, familiar wave of darkness weigh upon your eyes, and mm. um, you lean back, expecting the same sensation. Uh, a smile comes across your face, and your head goes limp. You see one. darkness. And on this plane is absolutely nothing. And you tilt your gaze up, and you see a bright, brilliant white light as a pair of colossal wings begin to flap down. And an entity appears before you, a humanoid entity. The blinding light uh, makes it a little difficult to reveal exactly who it is, but as they get closer to you, you're able to see that it is Zazriel. Papa. And your father walks towards you and grabs your chin and looks at you with a brilliantly bright, warm smile. You're coming home, son. Soon. And all will be told. And I can see everything as if, like, I had vision. Oh, yeah. It, it, as though you could see him in front of you. When you did see him in front of you in your ripe teenage years. You even remember, as he's speaking, Ezra and Bryant, your best friends. And then you are ripped from this vision. <laughs> you wake back up breath enters your lungs. You are unsure how to feel about this. And it's a lot darker again. It is much darker again. Uh, I think that's enough for me. You're looking a little pale. Know your limit. You know, I think you guys, uh, I think there's probably some streaks uh, running underneath the blindfold. Mm. Perhaps this is too strong of a liquor for this situation. It is stronger than I, you know, first expected. I, mean, I, I, I guess uh, with that said, Wall is going to finish his drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Gulp. Um, I mean, down. Are, you, are you still drinking the absinthe? Yes. Can't say, baby. Let's, we're all failing <laughs> tonight. I mean, I, I, so I, I blame Roll20. I blame Roll20. Let's yes. go. An eight with a plus five. <laughs> Dang, dude. Yes, dude. You should all buy this drink. It's great. I do want to try it. You, I might as well. You feel the familiar yeah. sensation once more. <sighs> this wave of heaviness, almost like a weighted blanket on your on your head and neck and shoulders, going down your back. Um, you see, uh, you see the walls, shoulders slump down, and for the first time since you have met him, his head goes limp, and he is not at attention. And wall, you see, again, a black space, a void in front of you. But on the floor, 
it is hard to mistake a very bright, shining light. Very long. And as you walk forward, it begins, the light begins to fade and dim, and you see that it is the sword of the Silver Sister on the ground in front of you. Blade. A blade. Like, he's going to, like, try and reach it and grab it. It begins to vibrate and hum in front of you. You can see it begin to move on the ground and start to bounce back and forth. And then right before you touch it, it shatters into three pieces. A hilt. And two separate blades. And a white mist erupts from it. The light fades away and looks just like an intricate longsword at this point. The dancing lady forms in front of you. She begins to move, tussle her hair, smile, a very, very bright smile, and comes to your height, naked, bare before you, and says, you have failed. and you are ripped back to the bar. <sighs> You're awake. <laughs> like, Wall immediately, like, grabs the sword and, like, unsheathes it, like, slightly just while sitting at the table just to check and see if he still has it. It's fine. It's humming. It's beginning to glow a little bit as you unsheathe it, and you feel its warmth on your hip. Everything is okay. <sighs> no. I, I I am leaving by the rule of blades. I will not have things taken. There is only... There is only... There is only things to gain. Mm. It was just Not the good. juice, buddy. Yeah, it's some bad juice. It's just the juice. <laughs> it's just the, the juice. juice. I don't um, know, Sander. Should we try the juice? As <laughs> Should we try the you. juice? I don't know about you. But why don't you pour me a cup of that? I want. I want to give it a go. Yeah, you know what? You uh, <laughs> next to you. Next to you, Wall. Uh, after such an intense vision, get a little jump scared like by the pain. the entity appearing again before you. This black smoking entity with robes flowing uh, and and no face. But uh, you hear emitting from like its chest. It says, "Last call." And he begins mm. to take these empty plates and put them in his stomach. Oh. I'll each take an abyssal absinthe, please, for myself and my blue friend here. As he finishes putting the last plate into his stomach, um, you hear it kind of like, you hear them settle, almost as though he's stacking them inside of himself, and gives everybody a deep bow before holding out a clawed hand, asking for some money. How much would you like, my friend? Um, so how many people are getting it? Uh, me one for me and one for Sunder. Okay, so ten silver pieces. One gold. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's one gold. You know, first yeah. time I see, uh, I watched uh, someone, uh, in, you know, witness a couple bad trips and then also want to follow suit. <laughs> uh, the the uh, fingers curl back into the palm as the the silvery light of the of the money disappears in this blackness, and uh, once again. Gives a very deep bow, head almost touching the table, and disappears. You got some time before the drinks come. I do not Mm. think this was a bad trip. I think it was a message of some sort that I must persist in my pursuit of further strength. Hmm. It almost seems like the wine is opening your mind to something that you need to do. Oh, I already okay. know what Mind I need to do. I am I am following the rule of blades. It is as simple as that. There is no other course of action for me. What Sunder, can you make a history blades? check for me? I can indeed. Continue your conversation, sir. Oh, no, I was just asking what the rule of blades is. Yeah, it seems like you, it's like a code of honor or something. Man, the wall, like, it seems like he's 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 got like. A mix of anticipation, but also, like, nervousness. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how do I explain? I, I I am not good at telling stories, but I will try my best. Uh, it is... Uh, 
how you say, a, a way of living. No, a, a set of, uh, no, it is, ah. Uh, okay, you explained I it to me before? Uh, I think he <laughs> never did. This is, okay, this okay. might be the, Ooh, okay. Scene. Yeah. <laughs> so. I was gonna try and help. So it, it, he's, ah, uh, okay. I will tell you how I came to know the rule of blades first. That's a good idea. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you will understand that way. Uh, when I was just a little, little one, very small, still without the name, I... You little? Surely not. I had... The, <laughs> I will take that as a compliment. <laughs> uh, I had a dream. I, I Usually I do not remember dreams, but this one, it was... It felt so real. It was... I was... How do you... How do I describe? It was a sword, a blade. No, not uh, not a sword. Uh, not you dreamt uh, of a blade. A blade, yes. It was a blade, and it cut. I did. I couldn't. I did not see what it would cut, but it cut something. It was cutting and cutting and cutting, and it kept cutting, but it did not dull, or it did not get dirty or rusty. It grew stronger. Every cut, it grew stronger. Interesting. Huh. I, I do not know this. This dream, it, uh, it affected me in some way. I, I felt it be a message of something that I had to become the blade, and I had to cut and become stronger. And I, I feel it. It is after. Uh, it is like. After you you endure a great hardship and and uh, go through a great challenge and you win, you feel stronger somehow. Yes, you you surely you must have felt it. I can agree with that. Can yes, yeah, that is the rule, the rule of blades that you cut and you grow stronger. That's what it is. Uh, I do not know if I am explaining myself correctly, but it, I feel like. Whenever we are overcoming these challenges, we are rewarded by the rule. And this blade, and like he pulls out the sword, like in his in his in his feverish passion, like <laughs> this blade, oh my God. this this <laughs> is reward for what we have what we went through when we fought the spider and I threw it down into the little chasm. I this was the reward for that. This is the rule of blades, and it is in its purest form, giving me a reward. To grow stronger. Well, hold on. You God, I love wall. You didn't have it the whole time. I thought that was your blade. No, no. I, it is like it called to me when we were at the the little hideaway, the hallway place. I felt it. It pulled me, and and it it has to have been a gift, surely. The blade gave itself to you. Yes, it was given to me by the rule of blades. It is a reward. I am growing stronger after overcoming a challenge. This is the rule of blades. This is also what Loth teaches us. The fact that we grow stronger the more we are tested. You're rewarded for your efforts. Yes. Mm. I see. And that <sighs> the apparition was... appears and the drinks are served, he just as quickly disappears and pops up to another group um, adjacent to you. Continue. Amazing. So that sword is the same one that hurt Loth's son. Interesting. I, I do not know if this is the same blade from my dream or not. It is it, hard to explain. And it was on one of those, you looted off someone's body, huh? Yes, I, I, one of the corpses was holding it, but uh, perhaps it... I was meant to find it somehow. I see. Life works in mysterious ways. And mm. you never know. Things tend to fall into your lap, whether you're True. expecting it or not. And, and Wall's, like, leaning back and... He still has, like, part of his helmet lifted up, and you can see, like, he usually has a permanent smile, but, like, you can see it gets a little warmer. Like, oh. I, I, I told my tribe this story of the dream and the blade, uh, but they, 
they thought me a fool. So I am, I am grateful that you are not laughing at me. <laughs> no reason I mean, to laugh. After what we've seen, uh, I'll be honest. Uh, you could say anything, I'd probably believe it. Good. That is good. I, I thank you. Uh, if I may ask, DM, two yeah. questions in the same sure. uh, vein, I guess. Lay it on me. The first one is, is if you can remind me, or if I can roll for it, what sure. the uh, what my church uh, says, and I might have already asked it before, but says about Alistair, or at least feels about Alistair, and um, if I know anything yeah, about how she check. may communicate with people on this plane. Okay. Hmm. And Wall's just kind of like fallen silent. He's just looking at the at the blade. And you can you can just tell that he's thinking really hard about a lot. Natural one DM. This Ooh, website is true. <laughs> <laughs> this, dude, look ow. at our numbers, guys. <laughs> oh. Look at our numbers. This information, you feel you, you feel you know it, but uh. it, something is keeping you from remembering it. it. There's something in the way of you reaching into the furthest <laughs> bits of your mind to your basic, basic orientation to this to this this religion um you just can't grasp it this is very strange mm. any other time you feel like you'd be able to do it it's like remembering uh, an actor's name or something right you're just like why can't i remember this for your tongue type the wall i am sure you are very important to someone very important and and you know normally i'd have something to, to some insight to impart on you and tonight it's just not that night too much. I'll be honest. Yeah, I was gonna okay. say you have a you have a way with words. Uh, <laughs> you really do. Uh, you, you, <laughs> wait, you, uh, yes, you may, perhaps you should be storyteller too. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we should sit down and you can speak, and I'll write it all down. Tell me a story for a change. Speaking of storytellers, don't you guys got your drinks here? We do indeed. Mm -hmm. Shall we, Sunder? After you, I'll right. we'll take you. Bottoms up. All right, con saves all around. Let's go, baby. Oh, yeah. Nineteen. Nineteen. <laughs> 19. <laughs> okay. And a ten. Okay. <clears throat> With a nineteen, you take a drink. How much do you drink? I'm a down the hatch. Let's go. Down Let's the hatch. Go. Let's go. Let's go. Party. Oh, the whole thing. Um. So, uh, you take a drink, it hits your nose first, you get that gunpowder, that, that acid, uh, that smoke. It's like, it's like drinking a, a smooth campfire, and on the back end, oh, such juicy strawberries. And then your vision gets heavy, your eyes close, and a smile appears on your lips. Your head wists listfully in front of everybody. You get a rush of energy and you open your eyes. You're back. You feel pretty good. That was very pleasant. That was like, you know, that's like three shots in one. You're ready to go. And then you're immediately sober. You just experience the uh, intoxicating effects and you're good to go. You're fine. Nice. Well, that was delightful. Mm. Lucky you. Sunder, <laughs> mm. you got a, what, nine, right? A 10. A 10. A 10. Okay, so your eyes get heavy. You see Sunder's like blue purple lids start to flutter a little bit um, and then they close. And in front of you, you see a void of darkness. Mm -hmm. And from the, you tilt your head up and then from the sky, you see this black figure descend and they are, just a second. Intense backstory this, moment. This dark figure descend, and they are bloody. A, a, a humanoid, masculine figure covered in cuts and gouges and injuries. You're not sure how they acquired lashings bleeding profusely 
barely able to hold themselves together. And it looks at you as it slowly ambles towards you in an uneven gait. And it says, why? Why did you kill him? He was a kid. He was a child. You are... You are banished! And you ripped back into the bar. Your eyes open, bright as day. You feel okay. But that was very personal. I think at this point, Sunder's kind of just left with his thoughts. He remembers a lot. I think a single tear will kind of roll down his cheek as he sits in silence. Yeah, you put the glasses down and the liquid kind of settles and everyone's but you guys are contemplating exactly what you've experienced. The day itself, the people in the room with you, and um, where do you guys go from here? That was last call. Uh, yep. That's it for us, huh? What what time is it currently? Like, in it's about in it's about eight forty five, maybe nine. Uh, I would assume around bedtime. It's not quite. Uh, like the bar area is beginning to close, but they still have an inn. They have a common room. Um, they have you know several other spaces in this inn. You guys could also go to the White's Rest. You could you know be out on the town all night for all I uh, for all I know. But um, what do you all decide to do? This place is an inn. Hmm. So what's our call, guys? We're we staying here. We're we going back to the White's Rest. I mean, we don't even know where Alistair is. I mean, oh, right. we could, could go back. <laughs> we could stay here. I'm fine with either. Um, they're kind of eyeing Sunder, just like looking like they want to ask about it, but deciding not to. How was all um, that food, Wall? Do you feel uh, sufficiently <laughs> rewarded? Oh, it was. It was good. I would not say it was great. I mean, the the chicken may have been a little too dry, and perhaps the huh. salt needed a bit more time in the pot. But other than that, it was good. It was acceptable. I am satisfied. You are quite the connoisseur. Foodie wall. Wall and Ramsey. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Walled and Ramsey. Gordon Walsey. Gordon <laughs> Walsey. <laughs> oh, man. It was very, uh, thank you so much for for treating me to, to that one, Zavrael. You did not need to, but I appreciate it. I refuse to go to bed until you feel sufficiently pleased. No, oh, I yes. am I am plenty pleased. Although perhaps the wine was not to my liking, but I I think uh, yeah. I think the same boat's uh, correct with the rest of you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> You notice sure. that the uh, the four more extravagantly dressed characters, uh, one the, the two in pretty much full leather armor, um, and the uh, the veiled drow. The veiled drow goes behind the bar and begins talking to the bartender, um, and the two uh, armored gentlemen go around and upstairs. Um, everybody else seems to be ambling their way out, uh, making their way to the the streets and stuff. It's a little thin in here, but it doesn't look like anybody's getting kicked out. It's like you know, there's it's like a lobby of a hotel at you know three in the morning. You know, there's some people here, yeah. but they're gonna be on their way out soon. Probably see if there's any rooms left to check in before we you know. Hey. If we're gonna stay yes. up the night, um, is this where you we all stay, sit. I can. Uh... I can go check. It seems you all need a moment. Sure, mm. that's a good idea. I don't. I mind. like sitting down. <laughs> my ass is comfortable. It's fine. My ass. I would hope my so. My ass. I'm going to leave you to your cups. <laughs> <Yeah. I'll laughs> <about laughs> Enjoy yourself. Oh, I will. I'm gonna go to the, uh, I guess the bar or whatever. Works okay. as like a front desk kind of situation. Yeah, yeah. You you approach the bar. Uh, there's a there's a human bartender there. Um, he kind of looks up and looks at you and says, "How can I help you?" Hello. 
Um, I'm just wondering what your rooming situation might be, if you have anything available, and what the, uh, what the cost might be. He turns, he nods to you, first of all, acknowledging your request. Um, he turns to the, the veiled drow that had been talking to the, uh, guardsman, um, in the corner, and he says, how many rooms we got left? And a very, very pleasant voice, um, she says, I believe we have two suites available, and that is it. And as she speaks, you just see her mouth moving. The veil is obscuring her eyes, her nose, um, eyebrows, you know, anything above the top lip. But you do see her speak, and she's smiling the entire way. She turns to you. You don't see her eyes, but she gives you a, a short bow. Thank you for patronizing us. What? Thank you for being patrons of my bar, oh, our establishment. I... Uh, <laughs> ab absolutely. Um, any time. Gorgeous. Um, the. <laughs> um, she <laughs> looks at the bartender, and at, on that, off that uh, comment, she looks at the bartender and kind of bows very, very uh, shortly, and ushers him away. Um, takes his place and says, you wouldn't, you wouldn't happen to be Argentum, would you? I am. <laughs> her uh, smile widens a little bit um, and her, her lips are awfully thin. Uh, and she says, I have been reading your books for the past few years and they have gotten <laughs> me through some very troubling times. Thank you. I would like to offer you our sweets for the night, free of charge. Oh, goodness, are you certain? If that is what you require, I, it would be my pleasure. It doesn't look to be quite busy tonight. I would love to take you up on that. Is there anything I can do for you? I'm grateful that uh, my writings have been so pleasantly received. She... You see her tongue curl across her lips very slightly, and she says, mm, that remains to be seen. You don't look too anyway. bad yourself. Oh, well, I suppose we'll see where the night takes us. Hmm. She goes back behind the bar. There's some double doors, uh, and you hear a little ting ting, um, and she comes back. This wonderful silken like gown that she is that she is in uh it, it looks very regal and based on everything that you have seen around the city it looks almost religious it looks it looks very uh put together and formal like a uniform um she comes back to you with uh two more obsidian obelisks um these are quite small um and she just gives them to you your keys room 201 and 204 Thank you very much. Uh, what was your name? Zyra. Priestess <laughs> Ilvare Zyra. Well, Priestess Zyra, it's my pleasure to meet you. You as well. <laughs> you too. She they goes will... back behind the bar and the doors part one more time and she disappears in the darkness of the kitchen. Well, oh, you do. <laughs> they will stand there for a moment, looking a little flustered by their own actions, <laughs> and then um, blushing very much, trying to compose themselves, just kind of like tousling their curly hair as they walk back to the group. Um, <laughs> um I got us some um, uh, two sweets, so we'll be bunking together. But um, they're on the house. Ah. Huh. Took you a while. You uh, figured maybe there might be no rooms left. Seems you've oh. got it figured out. No, um, I was just speaking to uh, a lovely priestess. Uh, I see. Well, uh, two keys for the five of us. I'm assuming Wool and Zephrael would like to stay together. I was gonna say, yeah. Probably for the best. 
I don't make assumptions for Wall. Usually we sleep in different rooms. I do need oh, privacy I'm, at night. I'm This sorry. is just true. All right. Well, tell us your preferences now before, you know, uh, otherwise forever hold your peace. Or I suppose I'll take them both. I, I do not care who I, who I share bed with, but you should know that I, uh, I snore very loudly here. <laughs> I don't really care. Which flip a coin. All right. Certainly. <laughs> flip a coin. Again. <laughs> One d two. One d two. All right. Um, heads or tails. Tails. Oh, yeah. Are you also going tails? Just, just flip it. What? You have to tell me your heads or tails first. Wait, 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 this is this is not how coins work. There's only two sides of a coin. Trust, yeah. <laughs> or shall we? Sure, tails. Oh my God. And okay, I've got two tails. All evens. Trust I'll, tr evens. I'll trust. I, I have no idea what this is. What you? How you're going about this? But two tails. Yeah. Sunder, uh What do you, What do you choose? I'm fine with sleeping wherever I can get. No, I mean heads or tails. Heads. Excellent. Wall? Uh, uh, heads. All right. I'll choose heads as well. Um, heads share one room and tails share another. Oh, I'm not flipping the coin. Wait, so what was the coin for? <laughs> what was the point of the coin? <laughs> Nothing. What the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> oh, no! I was following uh, them! I'm gonna enter the room with all the heads. The to the coin that cannot wow. flip. <laughs> oh my goodness. This guy baited me. So <laughs> we got debated, as they say. <laughs> you I don't know who debated. says that? But I agree. Oh, it's small from my hometown. Don't worry about it. So do you guys uh, make your way yeah. to the the, the, yeah, the, yeah. the rooms themselves? Okay. I'm ready to sleep um, off this poison. You're each given uh, you're given two keys. Uh, one key has is just. Uh, is a very dark key it's very it's very it's almost black um if not a little pur purple uh the second key has uh a spider carved into the key itself same material one. but it uh it catches the light and you see it's etched in uh spider's legs um <laughs> you guys go upstairs together as a group yeah. um, uh argentum's gonna linger at the bar <laughs> okay okay um do you give them the keys Ooh. yep okay cool um, so the group that goes up to the the bedrooms, um, it, it also has the number of the bedrooms, the number of the suites on each key, and it's two hundred one or two hundred one and two hundred four. Um, so you go to two hundred one. It's on the second floor. You're uh, up two flights of of of, of stairs. Uh, you go all the way down the end of the hallway, and there are two very extravagant doors. Uh, well, at, each of the suites has pretty ornate outside it looks like the suites are themed um hmm. to some extent you haven't seen the inside of one uh but one on the outside uh in, in, a, in a uh a plaque above it says uh the shadow weaver's chamber and uh the one next to it says an embrace of legs <laughs> both of these mm. sound awful hey yo <laughs> They sound. You guys I mean, have the keys, so you get to pick. But I was gonna say, I thought this would be up your alley. Is that all right? Yeah, sure. Heads or tails? <laughs> we're, not doing, we're not doing this again. Which one? Just do you, you and want? me. Just you and me. If you, uh, if, whatever you choose, you you get to pick first. All right. I'm, you know, since we're in separate rooms, I'm just gonna walk to one of the doors. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm gonna flip Phoenix. a coin. You get. I choose the Shadow tails. Weaver's Chamber. Okay, cool. You get the Shadow Weaver's Chamber. I guess um, I'm heads. You take the black key, the blackest <laughs> key, and mm. uh, it doesn't look like there's some any sort of like like traditional <laughs> keyhole. There's like this square that you kind of insert the obelisk into, and it stays there. And the door, you hear this mechanic stuff on the inside of the door. It looks to be pretty thick. <laughs> And the door it starts to open itself, um, revealing the Shadow Weaver's chamber. Um, mm. This chamber looks like it's designed for those who enjoy being in the darkness. Uh, the walls they're draped in layers of fine black silks. 
uh it's very it's not very like the light isn't bouncing anywhere here even the light yeah. of the moonlight comes in and then is caught by all the darkness um it's it's a comforting darkness it really is it seems mm. it's just like the downstairs very uh plush lots of pillows uh the centerpiece itself is a very grand bed uh with a canopy of what looks like lace that is in a spider web pattern um and it casts a shadow itself on on the bed the mattress is very comfy a uh, down mattress uh it, Maybe from some birds that exist in the Underdark or something like that. Uh, and next to the bed is a nightstand. This is made of stone, um, black stone. Uh, there's a glowing crystal lamp right next to it as well. There's very soft ambient colors around. Um, and uh, there's a small bathing area in the corner. A uh, little personal bathing area. It doesn't look like it's going to fit more than one person. Uh, and mm -hmm. there is no water in it quite yet, but there is plumbing. Um, and nice. It, this, this room seems to be sound treated i don't want to say it's soundproof but it, this room looks to be quiet <laughs> if you close the door there's probably no noise that's going to leak out also you notice that the key shot out the other side of the door so that is the shadow weaver's chamber Ooh. for those who would like to be in there does it fancy who's, who's, who's entering that all right i'm in okay Three guys who has the bed. other key <laughs> That would be me. <laughs> okay, cool. Hey, you have to right. in the other door too. Yeah. So you uh, you insert the obelisk into the uh, the embrace of legs room. Um, you also notice that on the outside there are these like iron legs uh, that are kind of uh, a canopy over the door itself. Uh, they uh. look like spider's legs. Shunk. <laughs> the door creaks itself open. The key is absorbed into the door and spat out the other side. And this huh. room looks like it is intended for people who revere the spider aspects of Wolf. Um, Ooh. The walls are adorned with uh, intricate, like silver threaded tapestries um, with that show stories uh, of, of, of Lolf's journeys, that show stories of uh, her pantheon and her relationships. Um, the bed itself is a very, very well-crafted bed with bed posts carved to resemble spider's legs coming out of the ground, um, out of wood. Um, and inside the mattress, or uh, over the mattress, is some silk sheets uh, that feel very, very soft to the touch. Um, above the bed is a chandelier uh, hmm. created of crystal and silver that looks like a spider that's being suspended from the roof. And uh, next to the bed is a, uh, a vanity with a mirror, um, a mother of pearl inlay, uh, gorgeous, gorgeous room. Really, really cool uh, patterns on the rugs and stuff on the ground. Uh, and there's an ensuite bathroom. This was a little bit bigger than the uh, Shadow Weaver's chamber. Um, big black marble tub, uh, faucets shaped like spider like mandibles. Um, and uh, the water here is, is particularly hot. Um, but yeah, that's the that's the Iraq or uh, the uh, Embrace of Legs room. You know what? Yeah. <sighs> I got this via coin flip, so I can't really see any of the spider stuff. So I'll 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 sleep in here. I can do it. Okay. Okay. I'll actually. Uh, right. You know what? I'll. Uh, I don't know who's gonna join this one, <laughs> but I'll Our start. I'll we'll start running that bath. There. They're quite large beds too. It's like California King. It'll it'll fit several people if you need it to. Um. But yeah. Sure. And you got these for free, which is kind of cool. Uh, nice. Speaking of, you guys. <laughs> uh, regress into your uh themed rooms for the night and uh argentum you are at the bar and you are alone for the time being what do you do they will uh pull out their book containing their manuscript for their most recent book and they will just start writing just kind of taking in the uh the atmosphere of the tavern uh, making addendums to their uh, their previous writings and just just kind of working in the tavern and just kind okay. of hanging out at the front bar and just seeing where the night takes them. If the priestess wants to come back out, she's they're fine with that. But outside of that, uh, Argentum's just doing their thing. Sure. Um, five minutes pass. You get a couple of paragraphs in. Ten minutes pass. You write two three pages you're you're on a roll you're feeling good this is you're starting to create you're entering the flow 
20 minutes pass, and you are absorbed in your writing. You are feverishly penning your next novel, and you don't notice Priestess Zira appearing before you. Is that your new novel? Oh, uh, um, <laughs> sorry. Was, uh... Sorry for eavesdropping. I didn't <laughs> notice or recognize the script. I've read most of your books. And she slides this glass towards you, this like tumbler full of this black juice. Here, great heart juice. Gives you the oh. energy and wherewithal without interrupting your sleep pattern. Oh. Thank you. Uh, they'll close their book and tuck it in their bag. No spoilers. Of course not. Why spoil the ending of such a beautiful story? I'm glad to hear you're enjoying it. This one is, uh, there's a lot more twists and turns that I think mm -hmm. you might enjoy. She inhales deeply. Hmm. Do I smell? Dusk flower. Indeed. I thought, well, why not, right? Did you know? And she like creeps her fingers across the bar, almost like a spider, towards your hand. It has an increased effectiveness on drow. Oh, really? And Argentum will just kind of lean closer a little bit. And... How so? With one hand, she is holding yours, and with the other, she pulls back her veil, revealing these gorgeous, almost amethyst, gem-like eyes that blink back at you. And for once, you saw the smile on the lower part of her face, but you can see it in her eyes now. And she leans in for a kiss. Argentum will a thousand percent reciprocate. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fucking go. And we pan over to the fireplace that is slowly being the snuffed panda out fire? by the entity that had been manning the bar as he looks back and puts the poker down at these two people engaging in a wonderful act of, of, of um, affection. And that's what we're going to call tonight. Let's go! <laughs> this this yay, indescribable yay, horror yay, from beyond the colors yay. of time. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so this eldritch entity is like, these kids. Like, <laughs> no kissing in my cavern. <laughs> yeah, that's that's uh, game four. That is episode wow. four. Shadows uh, over the yeah. That Yeah, went a in lot a has happened. Different direction. <laughs> a lot <laughs> has Isn't happened. that charisma to work? Well. You got, oh, Jazzy rated. What's up, man? Um, Dustflower Cream coming in clutch. No charisma checks needed for that. Let's um, go. Let's go. Yeah. But uh, yeah, guys, amazing. Thank you so much. I this thank was you. fucking amazing. We had a this was a great session. I had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I hope you yeah, guys had fun too. What a ride mm -hmm. <laughs> going yeah. from You're... like slicing up gods to damn y'all. Yeah. Little, yeah. little, 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 little there you go. Dude, wall hit a god. <laughs> wall wall hit, hit a god. god. With a 25. At level like, two. At level two. At level two. With a 25. It's insane. Insane. I absolutely love this party. And I'm so, it's so nice to see you guys uh, growing together and, you know, finding out the mystery. We now, again, as we had stated, we're out of the prologue. Um, you guys have your mystery. You have your story. And uh, where it goes and where it ends is entirely up to you. So, y'all, I took I'm seven excited. pages of notes tonight. Like, Holy I was shit. mad. Nice. There's information you guys didn't even get. I have like three pages of information that, like, there was that that speech was supposed to keep going for like <laughs> another like ten <laughs> minutes, but <laughs> Wall was like, ah, no. And then you guys were like, I'm gonna steal the eyeball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was that was that was so fucking cool. That hey, can I see your notes? All of the yeah, yeah I, I will. Yes, I will a thousand percent type those up for y'all. All right, we are going. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we can roll the uh, credits. I think we talk over the credits, right? Um, it'll show all the patrons and yeah, everything. Yeah, usually. Um, mm -hmm. and we're gonna rate a friend, but yeah. Woo. Okay. Let's go.
like that kind of like you guys can interact with each other getting to a bar and talking to each other getting mm -hmm. lore dumps without you guys telling them the lore mm -hmm. really nice. yeah I, I had a blast that was amazing all right let me see who we gonna raid i don't know okay. do you guys have any favorite moments besides uh the fate yeah. of black at the end there yeah do what'd you guys think i love fate to black moment fate to black moment let's go great. I really like the all the 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 I guess I don't know if they're nightmares, but the, the subconscious visions. Divisions, yeah. moments, yeah, the visions from the dream. Yeah. That I was saying. But I yeah. really like the uh, I don't know. The whole session was great. We almost we actually lived. I was mm. so worried we were gonna die, and those <laughs> rolls were terrible today. Dude, our roll. I mean, you know what? It's it's all variants, right? You know, next next session is all gonna be high rolls. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. 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 Next session is going to just create a great great ones next week. <laughs> I was going to say, like, you know, like, th this is actually good because we got a lot of bad rolls during just like RP, you know, moments. And so when the combat comes around, we'll be, we'll be killing it. Yeah. And I, I love going back because uh, shout out to our wonderful cameraman, uh, Nate. Um, adds ambience to every scene. Uh, make sure that you guys, as an audience, are taken care of, and you get all the information that you need. So, shout out to Nate. Amazing job. Uh, yeah, he's basically the, the man behind the curtain, as it were. Because I'm not controlling any of this stream. Nate is, and I'm just here as a as a DM. But anyway, um, that's the end of the credits. Everybody, please say good night and uh, have a good tomorrow. Okay, yeah. it's Friday. Love a little. Thank God it's good night. Good night. Good night, guys. Good night.